keeping alive. Well, certainly today's race had all the ingredients of high drama. Spartan Missile, last ridden here at Aintree by the late John Thorne, now making an emotional return in the 11th hour. And King Spruce, ridden by the American Joy Carrier, representing the best chance yet of a woman rider actually winning the race. And Corbia, giving Jenny Pittman an equally good chance of becoming the first woman to train the winner. Our commentator is Peter O'Sullivan. And the crowd's looking across now towards the start, uh, waiting for them to be called in. And a line being formed now. This is Petey Sandy, the hope of Scotland. Right on the inside, uh, Corbier with Keen Gaddy and the Vintner. And uh, the start of Mance's rostrum. And they're under orders. And will shortly be running in the 1983 Grand National. Formed a very fair line, and they're away. They're away to a roar from the crowd and running down towards the Melling Road. Delmos and Corbier are the first two to make it from the Vintner with Caroboy on the outside. Very close up behind him is Grittar. Towards the far side is King Spruce also, but it's Delmos and Bill Smith from Corbier. Then Caro Boy and then King Spruce and Grittar just in behind him with the Vintner close also. Don Cregan not far behind him, but Delmos making it as they come to the first and we join John Hammer. And Delmos will be the leader at the first of the 30 fences. Jumps it safely, Caro Boy over second, the Vintner over third. Corbier is over all right. Tower Moss has fallen. Midday Gun has fallen. And midday welcome a faller, Geraldine Reese, all three jockeys are up. I don't see a faller at the second, but as they come to the third, the big ditch, it's Delmos in the lead from Corbier, then King Spruce right up with the leader, so is Williamson, so is Caro Boy. And a faller towards the outside is That's It. That's It, I think the only faller as they go to the fourth, and Delmos from Corbier, Williamson, Royal Mail, King Spruce and over to Julian Wilson. Delmos, Corbier right on the stand side, Williamson there in the centre, towards the far side is Colonel Christie, right on the outside is Royal Mail, just behind him is John Joe O'Neill on beacon time as they jump the fifth, Delmos over it here from Williamson, Corbier, narrow boy towards the inside, towards the outside is Colonel Christie with Royal Mail and beacon time, and Joy Carrier right there on King Spruce as they come down to Beecher's Brook. And it's Bill Smith blazing a trail on this side on Delmos with Romel on the outside. Delmos over. And Williamson is down at Beaches. And Joy Carrier has King Spruce is down. Royal Mail is down. So Joy Carrier is out of the national as they stream towards the next. Over the next. It was Keen Gaddy who jumped in front from Delmos and Corbier. Colonel Christie towards the outside. Then comes Gritter. Then Caro Boy and Beacon Time and Williamson and Grease Paint. A brilliant recovery by Williamson's rider at the canal turn. Three to one was a baller at Beaches as well. And at the canal turn, it's Delmos who's back in the lead from Corbier and Caro Boy. And the outside of that is Gritter in fourth and Colonel Christie. Kill Craigan was a faller at the canal turn as they jump Valentine's. Delmos over from Corbier, Gritter, Colonel Christie, Caro Boy, Grease Paint and Beacon Time. Behind that is your man. Then Williamson. Behind Williamson is the Vintner. Then Fortinas Express as we rejoin John Hanber. And Delmos led over the tenth from Corbier in second place. In third place towards the outside is Colonel Christie. Then Beacon Time and Gritter. Then Caro Boy and Grease Paint. As they go to the next, it's Delmas from Corbier, Colonel Christie, Beacon Time, Grittar. Then towards the outside, Hello Dandy, then Caro Boy, Grease Paint, then Fortinus Express. And as they go, Keen Gaddy, a faller, and as they go to the next, it's Delmas over first from Corbier, Colonel Christie, Beacon Time, then Hello Dandy, Grittar, Grease Paint, Caro Boy, Fortinus Express, Williamson, your man. Behind your man is Never Tamper. They're all over that one safely, and as they go across the Melling Road, it's Delmas, the leader, from Corbier, Colonel Christie and Grittar, and over to Peter O'Sullivan. 
Yes, still 13 euro. Delmos taking him along and Bill Smith from Corbier. Just in behind them come the ladies master and Colonel Christie. And just in behind them comes Grittar. Behind uh, Grittar, towards the outside is Pilot Officer. Then comes Grease Paint. Behind Grease Paint, Beacon Time. Then 14 is Express. Behind 14 as Express is Dun Craggan as they come down towards the next. Del Moss still taking him along from Corbier. Then the ladies' master, Williamson on the outside. Pilot officer is next. Coming down towards the one before the chair now, the fence that will be the last on the next circuit, and still Del Moss and Bill Smith from Corbier. The ladies' master, pilot officer. Just in behind them come your man, and then Grittar. Behind Grittar is Beacon Time, and then on the inside and going well is um, Oliver Sherwood on Venture to Cognac. Just in behind them, uh, going well is Caro Boy, and then comes That's It, and they're coming towards the chair now. And over that one, it was still Del Moss. Del Moss in the lead and a fall of their pilot officer. Williamson has gone too at the chair. And it's Del Moss leading Corbier now as they come to the water. Hello Dandy is in third on the near side. Colonel Christie's next. Then comes uh, Frank Gilman's Grittar. Then Grease Paint. Then Fortinus Express. Then comes Beacon Time. Behind Beacon Time is Venture de Cognac. Then your man. Then comes Artistic Prince. Behind Artistic Prince is Political Pop. Behind him comes uh, uh, John Williams on Never Tamper, just uh, behind Never Tamper now is Bonamoman making ground, Spartan Missile is next, then Petey Sandy on the outside with Hot Tomato also in pursuit and Caro Boy and as they run down to the next fence it's still Del Moss from Corbier, Grittar is improving Colonel Christie is still there and on the outside Hello Dandy with Grease Paint and over to John Hanmer and at the 17th, Del Moss landed in front of Hello Dandy towards the outside Corbier, Grittar, Colonel Colonel Christie, Fortinus Express and Grease Paint all close up, so is your man and political pop and venture to Cognac and Beacon Time as they take the 18th. Hello Dandy in the centre from Corbier, Delmos, Colonel Christie, Fortinus Express, Grittar, Grease Paint, then venture to Cognac, your man and political pop as they come to the big ditch and Hello Dandy out in the centre of the course, Corbier on the near side, Delmos a mistake, Grittar going well on the inner, then Colonel Christie, Fortinus Express, Grease Paint, venture to Cognac and a long way back, a tack cry, and one refusing towards the back of the field is the Vintner, and the ladies' masters almost come to a complete standstill, and another faller there was Menford as we join. Julian Wilson as Bonham Omen refuses. And Beacon Time is also a faller as they come to the one before Beaches with Hello Dandy on the outside, Corbier on the stand side. Grittar made a mistake there but got away with it. In third place is Colonel Christie. Grittar's in fourth. Fourteen is expressed towards the outside. Reef's been going terrifically well as they come down to Beaches for the second time. And it's Hello Dandy who's in front from Colonel Christian Corbier right on the inside and they jump Beaches. Hello Dandy, Corbier, Colonel Christie. Grease paint a side mistake, Grittar's over, in fifth place, behind those is Fortinus Express and Delmos who's tired, your man, then venture to Cognac, and uh, uh, Spartan Lessar's unseated his rider at Beaches, as over the 23rd it's Corbier who now leads, Corbier from Hello Dandy, Colonel Christie, Grease paints in fourth, Grittar's fifth, then a gap back to your man, behind those is Political Pop and venture to Cognac and Delmos and Fortinus Express, and then making ground is Petey Sandy as they jump the canal turn. Corbier over from Grease Paint and Hello Dandy. In fourth place is Colonel Christie, then Gritton, and then your man, then Political Pop as they come to Valentine's Grove. Corbier, Hello Dandy, Grease Paint, Gritton, Colonel Christie, your man. Tackroy's pulled up at the back. Political Pop's behind that, and then Venture to Cognac and Delmos and Petey Sandy as we rejoin John Hanmer. And they've got five to jump, and it's Corbier and Hello Dandy from Grease Paint and Gritton. Then your man, then comes Colonel Christie, Political Pop, Venture to Cognac, then Delmos and P.D. Sandy, and they've come into the last ditch now, four from home, and it's Hello Dandy in the lead from Corbier. Then in third place is Grease Paint, Fortinus Express has pulled up, Grittar's improving to dispute third place with your man, and Grease Paint a gap after that to Colonel Christie. This is the third from home. Hello Dandy and Corbier from your man. Then in fourth place, Grease Paint. Five is Grittar, then Colonel Christie and Political Pop, and Venture to Cognac and P.D. Sandy and Del Moss. And going across the Melling Road with two to jump, it's Corbier, Hello Dandy, then Grease Paint, your man, and Gritter, and Political Pop, and never Tampers refused, and over to Peter O'Sullivan. 
Yes, it's Corbier on the inside of Hallow Dandy. Then comes Grease Paint, very close with him, and your man also very close. Then in fifth place is Grittar, and under pressure, Grittar. Behind him comes Political Pop, and then Colonel Christie, and then Petey Sandy and Venture de Cognac as they race towards the second last in the 1983 National. And it's Corbier, trained by Jenny Pittman, in the lead from your man, Hallow Dandy, and Grease Paint. Corbier coming to the second last fence with his white face showing in the lead. Corbier lands in the lead. Your man lands second. Third is Grease Paint. Four, Hello Dandy. And five is Grittar. Six, Political Pop. Seven, Colonel Christie. And eight, Petey Sandy coming to the final fence now. Corbier in the lead from Grease Paint. Your man. And Huss in the race represented here by this eight year old, 22 year old, Brown Borough from uh, Henley on Thames. His father. A great sportsman himself and uh, a rowing blue. And here are the blue colours of his son. Triumphant on this eight year road. Always been in the van in this unique race. Who battled on marvellously to hold the courageous challenge of Grease Paint, to whom he was conceding almost a stone in the closing stages. So Corbier returns traditionally between two mounted policemen to that hallowed arena where the Grand National winner is heralded and unsaddled. Runner up on his previous run to Scott Lane in the Ritz Club, National Hunt Handicap at Cheltenham. And here returning the winner of the Grand National. The hopes of Geraldine Rees riding midday welcome quickly came to an end. John Hanmer describes the grief at the first fence. Delmos on the right of the picture this time, jumping it in the lead from Caro Boy and Corbier and Royal Mail. And then we have to wait quite a long time before the first faller, just coming into the picture now, Geraldine Rees and midday welcome. Then midday gun with Graham McCourt in the spotted colours, and then nearest to us the grey Tower Moss, whose jockey Richard Rowe is immediately on his feet, tries to catch Tower Moss. Richard's all right, Geraldine's all right, up she gets, and so is Graham McCourt. Beechers also took its toll. Four horses came to grief, including the other lady rider, Joy Carrier, on King Spruce. There is Royal Mail the Faller. We don't just see Joy Carrier going, but we are going to see three to one coming to grief just on the left there. And you can see his rider protecting his head, uh, but still getting kicked by Tacroy, who was so nearly brought down. But the fence that caused the greatest havoc was the chair. Peter O'Sullivan picks up that story. This is uh, Delmos leading from Corbier. Hello, Dandy. There's pilot officer going. There's Williamson going over him. There's Bonamo Men just jumping the fence now. Petey Sandy just jumping it with loose horses. Towards the left, Canford Ginger has gone there. And also Sidney Quinn. And there's uh, Chris Pimlock just being pitched over the fence as he's refused. And, and here is... Uh, the rider of Canford Ginger remounting, and he only goes on, in fact, to the water. And the race provided as fine a climax as you could wish to see. Yes, it's Corbier on the inside of Hallow Dandy. Then comes Grease Paint, very close with him, and your man also very close. Then in fifth place is Grittar, and under pressure, Grittar. Behind him comes Political Pop, and then Colonel Christie, and then Petey Sandy and Venture de Cognac as they race towards the second last in the 1983 National. And it's Corbier, trained by Jenny Pittman, in the lead from your man, Hallow Dandy, and Grease Paint. Corbier coming to the second last fence with his white face showing in the lead. Corbier lands in the lead. Your man lands second. Third is Grease Paint. Four, Hello Dandy. And five is Grittar. Six, Political Pop. Seven, Colonel Christie. And eight, Petey Sandy coming to the final fence now. Corbier in the lead from Grease Paint. Your man. Uh, here now, the official result. First, Corbier, 13 to 1. Second, Grease Paint, 14 to 1. Third, Your man, 80 to 1. And fourth, Hello Dandy, 60 to 1. Fifth, Grittar. Sixth, Petey Sandy. Seventh, Political Pop. Eighth, Venture to Cognac. Ninth, Colonel Christie. And last, 
Delmos. The fallers at fence number one in this year's Grand National, Tower Moss, Midday Gun and Midday Welcome. At fence number three, That's It and Mender. Fallers at fence number six, Beaches Brook, first time round, King Spruce, Royal Mail, three to one and Beach King. At fence number eight at the canal turn, Duncreggan. At number 11, Keen Gaddy fell. At fence number 15, the chair, Pilot Officer, Canford Ginger, Arigal Boy, Williamson, Sidney Quinn, and Over the Border. Monty Python refused. Fence number 16, the water jump, Oak Prime pulled up. At fence number 19, Carrow Boy, the Vintner, and Menford refused. Fence number 20, the Ladies' Master ran out, Beacon Time fell, and Bonham Omen was balked. Artistic Prince refused there. Fence number 22, Beaches Brook, second time. Tackroy pulled up, and Spartan Missile fell. At fence number 26, Fortina's Express pulled up. At 27, Never Tamper refused. And at fence number 30, Hot Tomato fell. So a marvellous achievement by Jenny Pittman, the peak of professionalism. And this evening, just one question remains unanswered. Can we really afford not to keep the Grand National alive? Good night. Good evening. The champion hurdle was won amid scenes never before seen, even at Cheltenham. It was a dramatic and emotional race, run before perhaps the biggest first day crowd in living memory. The market for the race was dominated by the Irish mayor Dawn Run, bidding to become the second mayor ever to win the champion hurdle. And the vast crowds of Irish visitors sent her off favourite at five to four on. Britain's number one hope was the great Desert Orchid, like Dawn Run, an habitual front runner, and the mount of Colin Brower, whilst another runner well favoured in the market was the 1982 winner for auction, ridden by Frank Berry in place of the injured Colin Magnum. The commentator is Peter O'Sullivan. The 14 runners being called in now, the white flag's up, they're under starters' orders, and they're running and racing towards the first of the eight flights. Settle down in the early stages. Dawn run right up with them towards the left of the picture. For auction also. And Desert Orchid just in behind them. And it's Dawn run from For Auction, Desert Orchid. Buckhouse just in behind them. Then comes very promising Cutter Dash, Seema. Fine Sun and the food broker at the back markers at the moment. And the mayor and John Joe O'Neill on Dawn Run, making it at the moment from Desert Orchid in second, for auction is third, then very promising and cut a dash, and Buck House. Dawn Run and Desert Orchid, very little between the two there, from for auction and Buck House, as they swing left-handed. Dawn Run, the favorite, from Desert Orchid the Grey, then comes for auction, the previous winner, behind him comes Buck House, then very promising and cut a dash and Seymour and behind them Sula Bula and then Amaral on the inside of Robin Wonder. And then Boreen Prince with Fred Kateri on the outside, the food broker and finally Fine Sun as they run downhill. And now racing towards the third, little between the two leaders, Desert Orchid on the far side of Dawn Run. Then for auction, then Buck House, very promising and cut a dash. And Seema, then Amora, Sula Bula on the outside, Boreen Prince, the back marker, Fine Sun. Racing down to the next flight, the fourth of the eight flights in the champion hurdle, and the grey Desert Orchid with the advantage over the favourite Dawn Run now as they come to the fourth. Desert Orchid from Dawn Run. Then for auction, Buckhouse, Sula Bula on the outside. Fine Sun finding this gallop too much at the moment and some way behind the remainder as they race towards the next flight. The fifth, Dawn Run on the inside of Desert Orchid, then closely grouped in behind are Sula Bula for auction and Buckhouse and then Seymour and Cutter Dash and very promising in Amora. 
Then Fred Kateri and Robin Wonder as they race towards the top of the hill now. Three left to jump. In the champion hurdle, Dawn Run, the mare, on the inside of Desert Orchid. As they begin the run downhill, Sula Bula right with them towards the outside. Buckhouse also right with them. For auctions, lost a little bit of ground. Coming down towards the next flight now, the third from home, Dawn Run on the inside with Buckhouse on the outside. Dawn Run from Buckhouse there, then comes Desert Orchid. Racing towards the second last flight now in the champion hurdle, and it's the Mayor Dawn Run being pressed by Buckhouse all the time on the far side. Dawn Run on the near side, Buckhouse on the far side, Seymour is in third place, then comes Very Promising, racing round the home turn now, and it's John Joe O'Neill on Dawn Run from Buckhouse and Seymour as they race towards the final flight. It's Dawn Run in the lead from Seymour and Buckhouse. Seymour producing a great challenge towards the near side, but Dawn Run with the advantage. Dawn Run lands in the lead over the last from Seymour, who's now gone a close second. And then very promising finishing fast, and Seymour on the near side, and Dawn Run on the far side. Dawn Run from Seymour as they race into the closing stages. It's Dawn Run from Seymour, and as they come to the line, Dawn Run has won it from Seymour, and very promising is third. That's the one, two, three. Buckhouse was four, and Fred Cat Jerry next, then Karadash and Amor and Boreen Prince, and behind them for auction, and behind him was Robin Wonder, and then Desert Orchid, and Sula Bula, and finally the food broker in Fine Sun, and so the result of the 1984 Waterford Crystal Champion Hurdle first, number 16, Dawn Run, owned by Mrs. Charmian Hill, trained in Ireland by Paddy Mullins and written by John Joe O'Neill. Second was number five, Seema, owned by Mr. Roy Padmore and Mr. W.E. Sturt, trained by Jim Old and written by Peter Scudamore. And third was number 15, very promising, owned by Mr. Bob Mann, trained by Mrs. Mercy Rymel and written by Sam Mooreshead. Fourth was number three, Buckhouse. Here is the heroine of the race with the a congratulatory handshake from uh, Tommy Carmody to John Joe O'Neill. And it had been a good pace in the early stages, in fact, not over fast, but then when the grey horse took uh, Desert Orchid, took on this mare, it really went some pace. A good, as we expected, fast gallop. And this was the answer. Where, coming to the last and facing up the hill, the mare not seeming to be going anywhere particularly, and a bit of a clumsy jump there. And it's Seymour with Peter Scudamore looking for his first winner at the festival meeting, who is the challenger. Buckhouse there in the light colours, just weakening. But the mare whose uh, action is quite high, isn't it? Probably better or ha happier in the softer ground keeps going. Guts have always been her great forte. But Seema has run a tremendous race. Jim Old has always thought the world of this little horse. I saw him at Chepstow last week and he said, well, they haven't quite come yet, he said, but they'll come. Well, they very nearly did come. But it's a great triumph for this mare. He's getting a real mobbing. And everything to suggest that she's really enjoying it. Well, I think Dr. Desmond Morris would have to admit that this racehorse knows she's won all right. And this is it, the great moment, as Charmian Hills holds aloft the Crystal Trophy, that the son of the chairman of the sponsoring company, Patrick McGarr. And afterwards, Jonathan Powell spoke to the winning rider. I was all, always fairly confident. She was uh, always going pretty well and jumping really well uh, for the last one, really. A lot of horses seem to come up and sort of take you on going to the third last. Yeah, but that's always the way with her, you know. But uh, she keeps, so long as she keeps jumping well, she keeps pulling out a little bit. And she just does enough to win, really. She's very lazy. And then going to the last, Seema came with a challenge and you just seemed to hang across a bit on the running. Yeah, she was lying across a little bit, but, uh, you know, I mean, she was entitled to be a little bit tired at that <laughs> stage, you know. So uh, she kept going, there wasn't any interference, but she kept going well, and I think if we went for another mile, she'd have kept going, you know? Mrs Hill has always said that this mare would go chasing next year, even if she'd won by 20 lengths today. Would you like to see her over hurdles for another year? I don't mind where she goes, so long as I keep the ride on her. <laughs> <laughs> John Joe, you've had a pretty tumbling sort of season yourself. You've had a lot of nasty falls, and you had a nasty cheekbone injury just over a fortnight ago. 
Does this make up for it? Oh, yeah, I had a great run up until Christmas, and from Christmas on I've had a few bad falls here and there, but that's racing, you're up today, you're down tomorrow, it's a great leveller, you know, so long as we're here and back and try and keep winning again now. Well, Mrs. Hill, many, many congratulations, you must be very relieved. I am relieved, I, uh, I am, I'm absolutely thrilled. <laughs> How did you spend the last 24 hours? Very worried, I imagine. <laughs> well, you know, you go over and over and over in your head, could it happen, couldn't it happen, but uh, and I was very glad when the race... Um, the time came for the race. <laughs> did you have a good view of the race? Yes, very good. Yeah, I had a grand view of it. And did it go roughly as you, as you hoped that it would? Yes, though I thought um, possibly that Desert Orchid I'd heard was such a front runner, I might go off faster again in front of us. So I was rather relieved to see that they, they kept company. I don't think you could get in front. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was the most amazing reception for the mayor. I mean, scenes that have really have never been seen at Cheltenham before. I mean, you must really have been quite concerned in there, weren't you? Well, I was a little bit concerned because she can kick, and I was afraid she might kick somebody. <laughs> I think she was too, you know, excited herself to think about kicking. Well, now, what about what plans for the mayor now? Well, <clears throat> we decided um, to send her chasing next season, uh, no matter what happened today because I think she'd make as good a chaser, if not better, than she's a hurdler. She's a natural jumper, and she's a big, strong mare. She'll, 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 I think, anyway, that she'll do the fences as well as she does the hurdles. This is Charmian Hill. Well, earlier, the Irish had looked to the brilliant Bob's line for their banker, the first banker of the meeting, in the Arkle Challenge Trophy. Well, his main rival was the North Country chaser, Noddy's Ride, and it turned out to be a memorable race. Noddy's ride from Alt Baltic, Voice of Progress, Bob's Line, Wealthy. Then comes Golden Friend, the Elliot and Rock Saint. First of the two ditches now, Noddy's ride in the lead and a clear lead at the moment. Coming to another plain one, Noddy's ride from Voice of Progress, Alt Baltic and Bob's Line at the eighth of the 12 fences in all. Noddy's ride jumps it clear of Voice of Progress, Bob's Line goes third, Alt Baltic four, Golden Friend five. Racing towards the final ditch now, four from home, and it's Noddy's ride in the lead with now Bob's Line going second, Voice of Progress third, these three a long way clear of the remainder, the final ditch, Noddy's ride jumps it well from Bob's Line second, third, Voice of Progress, and uh, Ort Baltica faller there, Ort Baltica bad mistake on Shipter's pilot there, so they're running downhill now with three fences left to jump in the 16th running of the Arkle Trophy, and it's Noddy's ride for England, Bob's Line for Ireland, Voice of Progress for England chasing these two, and then a long gap to the Elia as they come down to the third last fence. Neil Doughty now from Frank Berry, then Peter Scudamore quite close on Voice of Progress as they come to the third last. And Noddy's ride in the lead. Voice of Progress on the far side. Bob's line on the near side. Racing towards the second last fence now. And it's Noddy's ride from Voice of Progress and Bob's line. Coming to the second last fence in the Arkle. Noddy's ride from Voice of Progress and Bob's line. Noddy's ride lands in the lead. Bob's line second on the inside, then Voice of Progress. And here comes Frank Berry to try and challenge Neil Doughty now as they come to the final obstacle in the Arkle. And it's Noddy's ride on the far side. Bob's line on the near side. Bob's line with his white face showing just marginally in the lead on the near side. Neil Doughty on the far side. And, and there it was just Bob's line from... Uh, Noddy's ride as they race into the closing stages. It's Bob's line on the near side. Noddy's ride on the far side. Bob's line on the near side is going to win it. And this is another in the Oracle for Ireland. Bob's line is the winner of the Oracle. Second is Noddy's ride. And third is Voice of Progress. Fourth will be the Elia. Fifth, Golden Friends. Sixth, Rock Saint. And seven, Wealthy. And this is how we expected it to go. These three were rather superior to the rest of them. Noddy's ride had made the running and jumped spectacularly as they come down the hill. This can be the tricky one. And Frank Berry going for his stick there. For a moment, I thought I might have backed a winner, but uh, it certainly was living up to everything we expected. Back in third place, Peter Schoonamore on Mark Vesti's Voice of Progress, running a far better race than he had when beaten by Rock Saint. But here, going to the last, well... Who is going to win? It's anybody's guess. Frank Berry, who now has got the ride for, for auction in the champion hurdle, coming to the last, and he who jumps the last, it could make the difference. In fact, they jumped it stride for stride, and it's this long hill is going to sort the difference out. Neil Doughty first to get his uh, bat out, and at this 
stage. It's neck and neck, isn't it? But with Bob's line, who sometimes over hurdles was slightly indifferent, is proving to be the most consistent novice chaser in training today. And he's won a thrilling race. But he's taken nothing away from Noddy's ride in defeat. It was a superb arkle. The Bob's line, the winner, five to four favourite. Well, we certainly went a right gallop all the way. He jumped very well, barred the first stitch. He got a bit, stood off a little bit, caught his hind legs in it, but after that he jumped super. Great performance. And the horses in front were what, 10 or 12 lengths clear of you um, after a third of the race? Yes, yeah, just went down by after the war, her down to the, well, nearly to the last stitch. But once I jumped the last stitch, I was quite happy. I was close enough and I was going well enough. Uh, I jumped the third, second last very well. And I knew coming off the bend that I'd win barred in something stupid at the last, you know. Well, normally he has a habit of going very, very badly left-handed at the last. I noticed you tried to get up dinner at the second last, and, and um, Neil Dowdy got there first. Yeah, Neil had been jumping out most of the race, and I had been on his inner. But just coming off the bend, uh, Neil was on the rail, so there wasn't much room. So I decided it'd be too late. Again, he'd come off it at the last if he did jump out, so I decided to come up his outside. And I got a bit close to the last, but he was very, very quick. And he idled a bit in front on the run in, but he kept going well. Frank Berry. Well, it was a day that started with a rare reverse for the Irish in the Waterford Crystal Supreme Novices Hurdle. This is a race that they'd won for the last seven years, and today they had eight runners to represent them. But in the end, it was a British horse, Townley Stone, who went off favourite, and also a British horse who ran out the win. And as they begin the run downhill, it's Gav's Delight still in the lead from Brown's Gazette. Then Townley Stone, who moves into third. Straight shot is four. Then comes Motoron behind uh, Motoron. His poet's corner on the outside with Herbert United. Still well there. Nor Princess making good ground also. Coming to the third last, Gav's Delight. And Gav's Delight a faller at the third last. He's left Brown's Gazette in the lead from Townley Stone in second. Then in third is Herbert United very close. Then comes Motoron. Then a Poet's Corner as they come down to the second last. Brown's Gazette in the lead from Herbert United and Townley Stone. Brown's Gazette landed in the lead there from Townley Stone in second. Herbert United third and it's Brown's Gazette in the lead from Townley Stone and Herbert United as they come to the final flight in the Waterford Crystal Supreme Novices Hurdle. Brown's Gazette and Dermot Brown is well clear looking as though he's only going to jump it. Brown's Gazette jumps the last, gets away from it fast. Townley Stone jumps it next. Keep Neil Big Cavalier is making tremendous ground from the rear of the field, but it's Brown's Gazette under pressure as Keel Big Cavalier still makes ground. Townley Stone is in second, but racing up towards the line. Brown's Gazette's going to win it well at the line. Brown's Gazette is the winner in second, Keel Big Cavalier in third. It's Townley Stone and fourth was Nor Prince. So, a great win there for trainer Michael Dickinson and also the expatriate Irishman Dermot Brown, who revealed after the race that he'd sold his half-share in Brown's Gazette to his other half-share owner, John Poynton, just before the race. Well, by the time the Waterford Crystal Stairs hurdle came along, the bookmakers were really reeling. There'd been a big anti-post gamble on gay chance from 12 to 1 down to 5 to 1, but it was Buckby who went off favourite at 4 to 1. Peter O'Sullivan picks up the story. This is the second last, Gay Chance. Lands just in the lead from Daring Run, but there's nothing between the two. Daring Run very strong on the near side. Gay Chance on the far side, Crimson Embers. Trying to get back at them, but little between these two leaders now as they round the final turn and race towards the final flight now. Daring run on the inside, Gay Chance on the far side. Gay Chance on the far side, Daring run on the near side. The better run by, the better jump by Daring run. Gold Spun is coming back into the picture on the near side, and it's Daring run, Gold Spun and Gay Chance. They race into the closing stages. Gay Chance on the far side, Gold Spun on the near side as they race up towards the hill. Gay Chance is just holding them, and at the line, Gay Chance has won it and goes spun his second and Daring Run is third and it's a photo for fourth with Mayotte just getting up to be fourth ahead of Crimson Embers. Behind them came Skewsby and Hasty Storm and then Pomarbus and Buckby. And so the result of the Waterford Crystal Stairs hurdle. First number five, Gay Chance. Second number six, Gold Spun. And third number two, Daring Run. So Gay Chance, a comfortable winner there for trainer Mercy Rymel to make up for the disappointment of Gay Brief not being able to run in the champion hurdle. And it was a delighted owner, Mary Curtis, who received the prize from Mrs. Mavis Gillow. So by far from a whitewash for the Irish on the first day, here now the full first day's afternoon results. The 2.15, first number four, Brown's Gazette, 11 to two. Second number 10, Keelby Cavalier, 50 to one. Third number 18, Townley Stone, 100 to 30 favorite.
The 250, first number one, Bob's Line, five to four favorite. Second number six, Noddy's Ride, seven to four. And third number nine, Voice of Progress, six to one. The 3.30, the champion hurdle, first number 16, Dawn Run, 5 to 4 on favourite. Second number 5, Seema, 66 to 1. Third number 15, very promising, 16 to 1. The 4 5, first number 5, Gay Chance, 5 to 1. Second number 6, Goldspun, 20 to 1. Third number 2, Daring Run, 8 to 1. The 4 40, first number 5, Broomy Bank, 16 to 1. Second number 9, Honourable Man, 10 to 1. Third number 4, Sicilian Answer, 7 to 1. And fourth number 14, Planet Man, also 7 to 1. The 5.15, first number 16, Mossy Moore, 11 to 2. Second number 15, Oyster Pond, 12 to 1. And third number 2, Cathy's Lad, also 12 to 1. So an unforgettable race for the champion hurdle, a major triumph for John Joe O'Neill, who won a race against time to be fit to ride, and a great triumph for only the second mare in 55 years to win the race. And of course, for her sporting owner, 65-year-old Charmian Hill. Tomorrow's highlight is the Queen Mother two-mile champion chase. But tonight, the toast of the Cotswolds is John Joe Neal and Dawn Rock. Good night. Good evening. Spring blossomed joyously over the Cotswolds today as Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth the Queen Mother graced Cheltenham to view the race which carries her name. And again, there was a vast crowd to see Michael Dickinson's bid to win the race for the third year in succession. His two runners in the race were the favourite Badsworth boy at 13 to 8 on, last year's winner of the race, and the mount of Robert Earnshaw, and one of the few horses ever to win by a distance at Cheltenham. And also representing him was Rath Gorman, the winner in 1982, and now the mount of Graham Bradley. Peter O'Sullivan takes up the story. Yes, and they're running the first of the 12 fences. Kill Kill Owen in the lead for Ireland at the moment. From the Brock Shee, Fishley Gamble, Royal Radar, Artifice over on the far side. Kill Kill Owen from Royal Radar and Artifice. Slight mistake there by Dramgora. And Royal Radar coming to take it up off Kill Kill Owen. Artifice and Fishley Gamble, then the Brock Shee and Little Bay. And Dramgora. That's with Boy over on the far side. Royal Radar. Hands in the lead here, and they're going a real good clip. And racing uphill towards the next. And Royal Radar in the lead from Kill Killer in Artifice on the inside of Rath Gorman, then Fishley Gamble and Little Bay as they come to the fourth. Royal Radar. Kill Kill Owen, Royal Radar really dives for that, but uh, gets away with it. Royal Radar, Kill Kill Owen on the inside artifice, then Rath Gorman close, then Little Bay behind Little Bay is Fishley Gamble, then Badsworth Boy, and then Drum Gora the Brockshi, and finally Punentes as they run down to the next. Kill Kill Owen. Jump that in the lead from artifice on the inside. Royal Radar on the outside, Little Bay on the inner between horses, Fishley Gamble and Rath Gorman, and then Badsworth Boy getting a little bit closer with Drum Gora also, that was the water. And now coming to the first of the ditches, and still motoring at a real uh, good clip, Kill Kill Owen in the lead. Fishley Gamble the grey behind him on the near side, Artifice. Drum Gora and Little Bay well up there. Badsworth Boy going well in behind the leaders. Coming to the eighth now. Kill Kill Owen in the lead from Artifice. Rath Gorman, Little Bay on the inside. Fishley Gamble well up there. Then Badsworth Boy and Drum Gora. Punentes, then the Brock Shee. And finally Royal Radar as they come to the final ditch now. Four out and Little Bay has just struck the front. Little Bay landed uh, marginally in the lead there from Artifice and Kill Kill Owen. And uh, racing now down towards the third last, it's Little Bay in the lead from Kill Kill Owen. Then comes Artifice, then Rath Gorman, Fishley Gamble, Badsworth Boy. Behind Badsworth Boy is Drum Gora. And then comes Punentes. Royal Radar was a faller at the previous fence, and Little Bay is in the lead. 
with three left to jump. It's Little Bay on the near side, Kill Kill Owen, and then Badsworth Boy who moves into third on the inside, Fishley Gamble on the outer. Rath Gorman is losing ground, and Little Bay is in the lead now from Kill Kill Owen, Fishley Gamble, and Badsworth Boy. Little Bay landed in the lead there from Badsworth Boy. Fishley Gamble, a faller there, has interfered with Drum Gora. They're racing into the home turn now, and Badsworth Boy scoots through on the inside now to take it up from Little Bay as they race towards the last. It's Badsworth Boy clear of Little Bay. Artifice Drum Gora behind Drum Gora is Kill Kill Owen, and then Rath Gorman as they come to the final fence now. Badsworth Boy trying to win it for the second year in succession jumps it well little bay jumps it second artifice jumps it third and four drum gora and five rath gorman and racing into the closing stages and badsworth boy makes it a three-timer in the queen mother champion chase for michael dickinson as he wins it very easily badsworth boy is the winner second is little bay third is artifice four is drum gora five is ponente six and seven kill kill owen and rath gorman those are the only finishes and so the result of the 1984 Queen Mother Champion Chase. First, number two, Badsworth Boy, owned by Mr. D.H. Armitage, trained by Michael Dickinson and written by Robert Earnshaw. Second was number six, Little Bay, owned by Mrs. Stuart Catherwood, trained by Gordon Richards and written by John Joe O'Neill. And third was number one, Artifice, owned by Mr. Paul K. Barber, trained by John Thorne, ridden by Peter Scudamore. Fourth was number three, Drum Gora. Here's how Badsworth Boy won it in successive years, reviewed by Richard. It had been a good gallop from the start, and as they race down this uh, to this downhill fence, which is a horrible fence to face, you can see Little Bay in front, but he runs across, left-handed across the fence, and I don't know if he unsights the grey, but the grey falls here, Kill Kill Owen nearly falls, and uh, unfortunately the grey gets up and then stumbles across out of the picture. Badsworth Boy, meanwhile, on the inside, goes for home. Robert Earnshaw never in danger. But uh, at this stage, Little Bay, the only one here, you never quite know what he's going to do, but uh, it was very doubtful if he'd find enough foot to take Badsworth Boy. But very pleasing to see back in third there in the light colours, Artifice, running a tremendous race, and Drum Gora, the 81 winner. But Badsworth Boy picks up at the last, a neat jump, and that clinches it. There's no way that Little Bay is going to find enough speed, even if he has got it tucked up his sleeves, to come and do Badsworth Badsworth Boy here. But another 21,000 there to Badsworth Boy. What a nice winning total he's had. Chasers don't make a lot of money, but good chasers certainly pay their way and buy enough champagne. In second place, um, the Little Bay horse who we've seen run so often, he collects nearly 8,000 for Stuart Catherwood. He doesn't need it, but I'm sure he'll welcome it. And third, Artifice, a game run from him. Robert, who gave him a lovely cool ride. Never got worried for a moment. Although he was a little way out the back, running down towards the third last. And a picture that needs no commentary. Now I'm pleased to welcome the man who's just completed a memorable hat trick in the Queen Mother jump in chase. He is, of course, Michael Dickinson. Well, Michael, many, many congratulations. Badsworth boy, just as impressive as last year. Well, yes, uh, pretty well, not not quite. He had a, a low blood count three weeks ago. He missed his last race. And the boy who does in Graham Burroughs, who rides him in all his work, said he's not quite as bang on as he was last year. But he says it won't be a distance this year. He says it'll be 12 lengths. <laughs> he's only two lengths he out. He's only two lengths <laughs> out. He was quite chuffed, actually, yes. Oh, I haven't helped the rest when you get him right again. But uh, what happens now? Do you go on with him two mile chases? Uh, definitely stick to two mile chasing, yes. Um, he's... There aren't many chases left for him to run at, and he's really his next place is Liverpool. But the last twice he's been to Liverpool, he's ended up on the deck. So we may give it a miss this year. Well, rather less predictable was the outcome of the Sun Alliance steeplechase. Many of the season's best staying novices did battle here, and there were about half a dozen horses well backed in the race. In the end, favourite was Forgive and Forget to become Jimmy Fitzgerald's second successive winner of the race. But John Frankham set him a really tough task. They're racing downhill with three left to jump. Duke of Milan is in the lead. Duke of Milan from Ballina Carolad, Lettuck. Then comes Doody. Behind Doody is a kinsman. Then Forgive and Forget and Harvey's Town, who are both still making significant progress. Coming down now towards the third last. Ballina Carolad coming to challenge. Duke of Milan with Lettuck on the inside, a kinsman on the outside, then Doody, then Forgive and Forget and Harvest Town. Racing towards the 
Second last fence now in this uh, Sun Alliance chase and the Kinsman coming there strongly on the outside. Duga Milan on the inner, Ballina Carolad, Leddick and then comes Forgive and Forget and John Frankham still making ground but a bad jump there. Leddick is a faller there and they're racing round the home turn now and it's a Kinsman who's gone to the front from Duga Milan then comes Forgive and Forget and Harvey's Town and Ballina Carolad. It's a Kinsman though in the lead as they race towards the final fence with still Forgive and Forget making ground towards the stand side. Duke of Milan still there in the centre. Harvey's Town over on the far side. A Kinsman lands in the lead. Forgive and Forget jumps it second. Then comes Duke of Milan and then comes Harvey's Town. And it's a Kinsman with Forgive and Forget chasing him. Harvey's Town over on the far side. A Kinsman is holding Forgive and Forget and Harvey's Town. And as they race to the line, a Kinsman wins the Sun Alliance chase. And second is Forgive and Forget. And third, Harvey's Town. And fourth is Duke of Milan. Then Ballina Carolad and Arden Spine. West tipping behind them, Duty. And they're the only finishes and the result of the 1984 Sun Alliance chase. First, number one, a kinsman owned by Mrs. John Brockbank, trained by John Brockbank at Carlisle and written by Geordie Dunn. Second was number 11, Forgive and Forget, owned by T. Kilroe and Sons Limited, trained by Jimmy Fitzgerald and written by John Frankham. And third was number 12, Harvey's Town, owned by Mr. J.C. O'Keefe, trained by Ruby Walsh in Ireland and written by Mr. Ted Walsh. And fourth was number nine, Duke of Milan. And that defeat for Forgive and Forget really was a gamble that came unstuck. Well, there was another fierce Anglo-Irish clash in the opening Sun Alliance hurdle. There were three Irish challengers here, notably a straight heir who was ridden by Ted Walsh, deputising for the injured Colin Magna, while the English banker in the race was Bajan Sunshine, who went off favourite at three to one. Running down the hill now with uh, three flights left to jump, and it's straight air on the inside. Brown tricks on the far side. Wonder Wood improving over on the far side. Central line in the centre. Bajan Sunshine right up with the leaders, too. And over that one. Fealty has just struck the front from central line and also coming there strongly is Regal Pleasure racing for the first time. Bajan Sunshine running very easily on the inside as they come to the second last. Fealty lands in the lead from Bajan Sunshine. Straight Air is a faller there. Straight Air has gone at that one and it's Fealty in the lead from Bajan Sunshine. Second, Regal Pleasure is third. Brown Tricks is four. Catchphrase is five. Wonderwood is six and seven is Mr. Lord as they come down to the final flight in the Sun Alliance and it's Fealty in the lead. Fealty lands in the lead from Bajan Sunshine second and Mr. Tricks third. Brown Tricks third and it's Fealty now with Bajan Sunshine under pressure trying to get on terms with him over on the far side but Fealty is holding him as they race up towards, towards the line. It's Seamus O'Neill on Fealty who's going to win the Sun Alliance. Novice is hurdle. Fealty is the winner. Bajan Sunshine is second and it's a photo for third with Brown Tricks possibly just third ahead of Wonderwood and Contester on the near side and catchphrase on the far side and brown tricks was third past the post but after the race there was an objection by the rider of the fourth horse contester for leaning on him after the last fight of hurdles and brown tricks was disqualified it didn't affect the winner of course and that was a first cheltenham winner for peter brookshaw and seamus o'neill well there was a big anti-post gamble in the coral golden hurdle Oceans of money for Moss Moran, the northern fancy, who was owned by a syndicate of greengrocers, publicans and milkmen. It turned out to be an exciting race, but not the result they hoped for. Papa's Buskins, Arctic Manalek, Manta still improving on the outside. And Canio coming to join the leaders as well. Papa's Buskins now with a marginal advantage from a riderless horse. Papa's Buskins landed in the lead there from Manta. Then making ground is Simbad towards the far side. Christensen not far behind him. At the second last now, Papa's Buskin, Simbad, Canio, Simbad landed in the lead there. Moss Moran trying to get back at him on the inside. Racing now towards the home turn Canio coming there strongly and as they come down to the final flight it's Canio on the near side Moss Moran on the far side Canio lands in the lead Papa's Buskins makes a bad mistake there racing into the closing stages and Canio racing up towards the line in great style Canio 
Looks as though he's gonna hold him. Christensen coming there to challenge him, but Canio has held him. Christensen is second. Third is Moss Moran. Fourth is Pappas Buskins. And that was John Franken's first winner of the meeting. He rung up and asked for the ride, told the connections how the horse should be ridden, and indeed told him that the horse would win. Even so, it was a pretty fair afternoon for the bookmakers. Here now, the full results. The 215, first number 36, Fealty, 33 to 1. Second number 3, Bajan Sunshine, 3 to 1 favourite. Third number 35, Contesta, 12 to 1. The 250, first number 2, Bats with Boy, 13 to 8 on, favourite. Second number 6, Little Bay, 12 to 1. Third number 1, Artifice, 10 to 1. The 330, first number 15, Canio, 20 to 1. Second number 2, Christensen, 25 to 1. Third number 3, Moss Moran, 7 to 1, favourite. And fourth number 1, Pappas Buskins, 8 to 1. The 4 5, first number 1, a kinsman, 10 to 1. Second number 11, a forgive and forget, 11 to 4 favourite. And third number 12, Harvey's Town, 11 to 2. The 4 40, first number 3, Max Friendly, 11 to 4. Second number 18, Red Shah, 11 to 1. And third number 4, Mr. Donut, 9 to 4 favourite. And the 5 15, first number 6, Half Free, 16 to 1. Second number 17, Donegal Prince, 5 to 2 favourite. Third number 3, Classified, 8 to 1. And fourth number 10, Captain Dynamo, 10 to 1. Sad to say, two horses were put down during the afternoon. They were Fishley Gamble and Oak Ridge Boy. But only one jockey was hurt, that was Peter Dever. He was taken to hospital with a suspected fractured collarbone. Well, tomorrow is, of course, the highlight of the meeting, Go Cup Day. And for the past week, the race has been surrounded with controversy, and the horse in the centre of it is Borough Hill Lad. The bookmakers have been fielding against him as if he had only three legs, despite the protestations of his trainer, Jenny Pittman. Well, earlier, Jonathan Powell spoke to bookmakers' representative, Mike Dillon. Borough Hill Lad was very heavily supported uh, when he ran his early races from 20 to 1 down to 9 to 4. But when the market settled down and the real betting begins, which is about a fortnight before the race, he hasn't really been that well supported. I mean, horses like Wayward Lad and Brown Chamberlain have been backed in front of him. Obviously, you know, there are rumours about the horse. Um, we haven't started the rumours. As I say, we're in the supply and demand business, and people want to back Wayward Lad and Brown Chamberlain and not... Borough Hill lad. I mean, we're in the marketplace to take money, and if people don't want to back the horse at a certain price, we have to ease that price. You were quoted the other day as saying you haven't had a copper coin for the horse. That's right. I mean, he's been without a friend now for the last fortnight. As I say, he was very heavily supported from 20 to 1 down to 9 to 4. But when the real betting begins about a fortnight before the festival, uh, he's eased out through lack of support. The bookmaker's Bush Telegraph is invariably right. Do you think all is well with Borough Hill lad? Well, Jenny Pittman says all is well. I mean, she's the person you've got to ask about that. Well, John, I would have liked you to have come down and ridden him out this morning because uh, he had a good workout, and on the way home, he was his usual tricky self to get home. He was bucking and playing about, and he's in absolutely A1 perfect condition. He's just like a rose beginning to open, and by tomorrow, he'll be in full bloom, and I'm really looking forward to it. And what sort of price will Borough Hill lad be? I think he'll probably be about 5 to 1 on the day, and I think Wayward Lad could be probably as short as 11 to 10 or evens. My vet was there in the yard the other night to blood test Corbier, and um, he said, I hope your horse doesn't go out to 8 to 1, and I uh, said, why not? He said, because I back the sod at sixes. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you feel about taking on the favourite Wayward Lad? I'm not worried. I would have liked there to have been a bit of rain, because it would have inconvenienced Wayward Lad and Brown Chamberlain but uh, there hasn't been any. My horse is a good horse on any ground anyway, and uh, God willing and, and keeping out of trouble, it, it, I think I'm fairly sure that my horse is going to win tomorrow. Jenny Pedman. Well, meanwhile, Michael Dickinson's number one runner, Wayward Lad, remains favourite for the race at five to four. I asked Tommy Stack his views on the possibility of a Dickinson hat-trick. Well, he looks like I'm a great chance again, and uh, Wayward lad, I know he hasn't won on the track, but I can see nothing beating him tomorrow. He's a quality horse with a, and a, he's a lot of class. I think he's the class horse of the race. How, how do you feel about Brigorn wearing blinkers? Is that going to help him? Well, it'll help him, but what he's been doing in the last two races certainly comes against him. Uh, I know he's last year's winner, and he'll force the pace from from a long way out. And if he keeps going, I suppose you have to regard him. But his last two runs have been disappointing. And where do you stand on Barry Hill, lad? Barry Hill, lad, he's been very impressive. He's an unknown horse, really. I'd love to see Jenny Pittman win like everybody else would. But uh, I still think it's Michael Dickinson's horse take all the beating. But do you take these pinches, uh, rumours with a pinch of salt? Well, 
There's always something behind these rumours, but uh, we'll have to go along with what Jenny says. The horse is OK, and I think she wouldn't tell us lies. So how do you see the outcome? I can see uh, Robert Earnshaw having his, his only second rise of meeting and coming off with another winner. Two rides, two winners. Well, Tommy Stack, thank you very much. So, will it be Michael Dickinson again after that remarkable one, two, three, four, five last year? Or will it be Jenny Pittman writing another page of National Hunt racing history? Well, certainly today, in the big race, it was Dickinson's day. It's Padsworth Boy, clear of Little Bay, Artifice, Drumgora, behind Drumgora is Kill Kill Owen and then Rath Gorman. As they come to the final fence now, Padsworth Boy trying to win it for the second year in succession, jumps it well, Little Bay jumps it second, Artifice jumps it third and four, Drumgora, and five, Rath Gorman, and racing into the closing stages. And Padsworth Boy makes it a three-timer in the Queen Mother Champion chase for Michael Dickinson as he wins it very easily. Badsworth Boy is the winner, second is Little Bay, third is Artifice. They call the Cheltenham Gold Cup the blue ribbon of steeplechasing. And tonight, that blue ribbon is pinned firmly to the lapel of Jenny Pittman. Gold Cup day was a memorable climax to a week garnished with fine weather, almost perfect going and superlative racing. Today, up to 40,000 visitors created Cheltenham's very own population explosion as horse lovers and horse players foregathered at the crucible of national hunt racing. As the Gold Cup approached, it was Michael Dickinson who was centre stage. After Silver Buck and Bragorn, Dickinson now sought a hat-trick never previously achieved with different horses. Wayward Lad was his firm favourite, with Silver Buck's winning rider Robert Earnshaw in the saddle. Last year's winner, Brigorn, now wore blinkers for the first time, and he was really on his toes. Meanwhile, in the opposite camp, Borough Hill Lads attendant Andrew Jones won the £200 prize for the best turned out horse. With the huge crowd occupying almost every inch of the stands, Peter O'Sullivan describes a memorable race. Still, uh, John Frankham on Brown Chamberlain making the running in the 1984 Gold Cup from Bragorn on the inside. $50 more and Wayward Laird and Borough Hill Laird and Observe come next and then Scott Lane. And as they come to the 13th, Royal Bond improving a little on the outside. Brown Chamberlain lands in the lead there. $50 more, a bad mistake. Gets away with it. Bragorn uh, has lost a lot of ground there and looks as though he's pulling up with. Uh, Graham Bradley is under pressure, losing a lot of ground. Brown Chamberlain landed in the lead there from Barrow Hill Lad making ground on the inner. And Bragorn has now gone back into the picture. Wayward Lad is improving on the outside. Scott Lane's only just in behind him. And then comes Royal Bond as they jump the third ditch. And Brown Chamberlain landed in the lead there from Barrow Hill Lad and Bragorn. And Wayward Lad on the outside. Bragorn once again losing ground and under pressure, but losing a lot of ground as they jump that one. Beginning to swing left-handed now and face towards the final ditch. Everett is tailed off last. This is six from home. Brown Chamberlain is in the lead from Borough Hill Lad and Wayward Lad. Just in behind them comes Scott Lane, Drum Largan, who's improving. The final ditch. Brown Chamberlain lands in the lead from Borough Hill Lad, Wayward Lad, Scott Lane, Drum Largan. Racing towards the top of the hill now. Five from home. Brown Chamberlain in the lead from Borough Hill Lad. Wayward Lad, Scott Lane and Drum Largan. Drum Largan still improving. Canny Danny comes next. Uh, racing downhill now towards the fourth from home. Brown Chamberlain in the lead from Borough Hill Lad second. Scott Lane has gone third. Drum Largan is still improving with every stride. Wayward Lad comes next and then comes Kenny Danny improving from the rear. Brown Chamberlain down in the lead there from Borough Hill Lad. Then came Scott Lane. Mistake by Wayward Lad at that one. They're coming down now towards the third last. And it's Brown Chamberlain from Borough Hill Lad. Drum Largan is still coming. Coming there, then comes Scott Lane and Canny Danny. Over the third last, Brown Chamberlain, Barra Hill Lad, Drum Largan, a mistake. Then comes Scott Lane and Canny Danny racing towards the second last fence now and the elbow with uh, Brown Chamberlain in the lead from Barra Hill Lad, Drum Largan, Scott Lane and Canny Danny. Just two fences left to jump in the Gold Cup. Brown Chamberlain in the lead from Barra Hill Lad coming to challenge. It's John Frankham from Phil Tuck. There's little between the two at the second last. Drum Largan is third. Scott Lane four. Brown Chamberlain and Borough Hill Lad together. Brown Chamberlain jumps out to the right a little bit. It's Brown Largan is third. That's the one, two, three. Scott Lane is just fourth ahead of Brigorn. $50 more and Canny Danny. And then came Royal Bond and observed. And so the result 
of the 1984 Tote Cheltenham Gold Cup. First number four, Borough Hill Lad, owned by Mr. Stan Riley, trained by Mrs. Jenny Pittman, the first lady to train the winner of this historic steeplechase classic, ridden by Phil Tuck. Second was number three, Brown Chamberlain, owned by Mrs. Basil Samuel, trained by Fred Winter, ridden by John Frankham. And third was number six, Drum Largan, owned by Mr. Michael Cuddy, trained by Eddie O'Grady, and ridden by Mr. Frank Cord. And fourth was number 11, Scott Lane. And here is the hero of the 1984 Gold Cup, Borough Hill Laird. And it had been a fairly good pace. They'd spread them out early on, and Wayward Lad, the favourite, never jumping at all, made a lot of mistakes. As they come to the second last, Borough Hill Lad on the inside of Brown Chamberlain, who runs across right-handed from here, Drum Largan, the only other one in contention. But uh, Brown Chamberlain running a long way off a straight line. Phil Tuck, he must be powers up the hill. This young rider who had his face bent for him only about three weeks ago, how he must be feeling now with just the jam stick only 100 yards away from him and the Cheltenham Gold Cup. There aren't too many riders who've won this race in their time, and for Phil, it's a great triumph. I'm getting a tremendous result. with a capacity feel for the Daily Express Triumph Hurdle. Nicky Henderson's number one runner, See You Then, was a firm favourite here at 5-2, to two, but the race was marred by a tragedy to Henderson's other runner, Chilldown, who broke his leg at the second flight of hurdles. The race turned out to be something of an Irish benefit. Broadbeam in the lead now from Manpower. On the inside is Karlaminski. Then See You Then making ground even. Broadbeam a fall up. See you then making ground in behind the leaders now, but it's Manpower, the leader. Manpower, the leader, being pressed by Afzal. See you then on the outside. Kalaminski, very well there also. And star of screen making good progress over on the far side. But it's Manpower being pressed by See You Then. Then Northern Game and Karlaminski on the far side. Northern Game coming there quite strongly on the stand side. Karlaminski on the far side. Northern Game coming with a wet sail towards the stand side. As See You Then comes to jump it in the lead. See You Then lands in the lead from Northern Game on the near side. Racing into the closing stages and it's See You Then from Northern Game. Northern Game on the near side. See You Then on the far side. Northern Game with a marginal advantage. You race up towards the line. Northern Game is going to win the Daily Express Trial Final. Northern Game is the winner, see you then, is second and third is Manpower, it's a one, two, three for Ireland, if you call us, see you then Irish, because he's only just come from Ireland, fourth was Karl Aminsky, also Ireland, so officially it's a one, three, four for Ireland with Northern Game the winner, see you then second, Manpower third, Karl Aminsky four, that's the one, two, three, four in the 1984 Daily Express Triumph Hurdle and you don't often see a 20 to 1 winner from Edward O'Grady well, the Fox Hunters Chase is the Go Cup for Hunter Chasers, and I doubt if there's ever been a better race than today's. There were big fancies in the race for Earl's Break, who started favourite, the border-trained hunter, as well as for Oliver Sherwood's mount, Venture to Cognac. It turned out to be a terrific event. Six from home, and it's Earl's Brig in the lead from Venture to Cognac, Lakin and Compton led together, Spartan Missile and Anna Moran and Pastry Brush, and behind them, Earl's Brig, a faller has gone there, Pastry Brush has gone too, Earl's Brig and Pastry Brush have gone there, and also hampered further thought, who looks as though he's going to be pulled up, and it's Venture to Cognac who lands in the lead, five out from Lakin, who's gone second. Then comes Anna Moran and Spartan Missile, then shrewd operator still making ground from the rear. Four left to jump now. Coming down to the fourth last. Venture to Cognac from Lakin and Anna Moran. Shrewd operator, mistake there by Lakin. Spartan missile improving on the inner. Three left to jump now. And it's Venture to Cognac being pressed by Anna Moran, Spartan missile and shrewd operator. Venture to Cognac and Anna Moran from Spartan Missile and Shrewd Operator as they come down to the next and uh, Lavengro 
was a fall of a dead man, and they've got two left to jump now. In this, Cheltenham Christie's Fox Hunters, and it's Annie Moran on the near side, on the far side. It's ventured a cognac, shrewd operator and Spartan Missile are chasing them, with prominent King making ground also from the rear at the second last. Annie Moran and ventured a cognac, stride for stride from shrewd operator, bad mistake by prominent King coming to the final fence now, and it's ventured a cognac on the far side, Annie Moran on the near side. Ventured a cognac with the advantage at the final fence. Ventured a cognac lands in the lead from Annie Moran and Spartan Missile and Shrewd Operator and racing up towards the line. It's ventured a cognac looking as though he's only going to lose horse to beat with Spartan Missile putting in a good run over on the far side. But ventured a cognac holding them all and at the line ventured a cognac is the winner and Spartan Missile is second and Andy Moran is third. Compton Lad was four. They're the one, two, three, four. Well, it was five years ago that Oliver Sherwood first won at Cheltenham on this horse, Venture to Cognac. And that was his last Cheltenham ride because he hangs up his boots at the end of the season. As for Spartan Missile, there's no Grand National decision yet about him. There were two Grand National acceptors in the Ritz Club National Hunt Handicap Chase. They were Young Driver and Hill of Slain. And it was Young Driver who went off favourite. As they come down towards the third last, right-hand man being pressed by Tracy Special and Young Driver. Right-hand man landed in the lead there from Tracy Special and Young Driver in third. Then comes Hill of Slain, four, Fred Pellina, five, and Greymate, six. As they race round the home turn now with two fences left to jump in this Ritz Club handicap chase. Just two to jump now, and it's right-hand man over on the far side. Tracy Special on the near side. Young Driver back in third as they come down towards the second last. Right-hand man and Tracy Special. Tracy Special with a marginal advantage here. Lands just in the lead from right-hand man on the far side. Young Driver still trying to get in the picture over on the far side. Tracy Special on the near side. Right-hand man on the far side. Very little between the two on the near side. Tracy's on the far side. Right-hand man. Tracy's landed marginally in the lead as they race into the closing stages. Tracy Special on the near side. Right-hand man on the far side. Young driver still trying to get on turns as they race up towards the line. Right-hand man on the far side. Tracy Special on the near side. And as they come to the line, Tracy Special on the near side. Just wins it possibly from right-hand man. The judge may call a photo here. Tracy Special on the near side. Right-hand man on the far side. Third was Young Driver. And the judges called it. Tracy Special the winner. Right-hand man second. And Young Driver third. And that was the first Cheltenham winner for ex-jockey Andy Turnell. Well, the result of that race meant that the outcome of the Ritz Club trophy for the leading jockey over the three days of the meeting was down to the last two races. And the ride that finally won it for John Joe Neal was his ride on Path of Peace in the county hurdle. He finished, which meant that John Joe ended the meeting with two wins and three seconds. And it was a delighted John Joe from Her Royal Highness, the Princess Anne. And here now are the full last day's results. The 215, first number 35, Northern Game, 20 to 1. Second number 42, See You Then, 5 to 2, favourite. And third number 33, Manpower, 20 to 1. The 250, first number 19, Venture to Cognac, 7 to 1. Second number 17, Spartan Missile, 12 to 1. And third number 1, Anamaran, 14 to 1. The 330, the Gold Club Chase, first number four, Borough Hill Lad, seven to two. Second number three, Brown Chamberlain, five to one. And third number six, Drum Largan, 16 to one. The 45, first number six, Tracy Special, five to one. Second number two, Right Hand Man, six to one. And third number eight, Young Driver, seven to two favorite. The 440, first number nine, Hills Guard, six to one. Second number four, Path of Peace, 11 to one. Third number 11, Gav's Delight, nine to two favorite. And fourth number 14, Silver Wind, 10 to one. And the 515, first number nine, the Mighty Mac, seven to four on favorite. Second number 20, Connaught River, 25 to one. And third number 12, Diamond Edge, 16 to one, seven ran. And so we confirm that John Joe O'Neill was the winner of the Ritz Club Charity Trophy with two wins and three seconds. And Dermot Brown was second with two wins and a third. So another Cheltenham amends with memories of Dawn Run, Bob's Line, Badsworth Boy, Burry Hill Lad, so many others. Their memories that tens of thousands who flock to the Cotswolds this week will treasure for many, many months. In fact, until next year. Good night. Bob's line with his white face showing just marginally in the lead on the near side. Neil Doney on the far side. On, and there it was just Bob's line from uh, 
Not his ride as they race into the closing stages. It's Bob's line on the near side. Not his ride on the far side. Bob's line on the near side is going to win it. And this is another in the Oracle for Ireland. Bob's line is the winner of the Oracle. Second is not his ride. Dawn Run lands on the lead over the last from Seymour, who's now gone a close second. And then very promising finishing fast. And Seymour on the near side. And Dawn Run on the far side. Dawn Run from Seymour as they race into the closing stages. It's Dawn Run from Seymour. And as they come to the line, Dawn Run has won it from Seymour. And very promising his start. Harvest Town over on the far side. A kinsman lands in the lead. Forgive and forget jumps it second. Then comes Duke of Milan. And then comes Harvest Town. And it's a kinsman with Forgive and Forget chasing him. Harvest Town over on the far side. A kinsman is holding Forgive and Forget and Harvest Town. And as they race to the line, a kinsman wins the Sun Alliance chase, and second is Forgive and Forget, and third, Harvest Town. See you then, lands in the lead from Northern Game on the near side, racing into the closing stages, and it's See You Then from Northern Game. Northern Game on the near side, See You Then on the far side, Northern Game with the margin advantage, you race up towards the line, Northern Game is going to win the Daily Express Triumph final. Northern Game is the winner, See You Then is second, and third is Manpower. It's a one, two, three for Ireland, and it's Venture to Cognac on the far side, Anima Ron on the near side. Venture to Cognac with the advantage at the final fence. Venture to Cognac lands in the lead from Anima Ron and Spartan Missile and Shrewd Operator and racing up towards the line. It's Venture to Cognac looking as though he's only got a loose horse to beat with Spartan Missile putting in a good run over on the far side. But Venture to Cognac holding him all and at the line. Venture to Cognac is the winner and Spartan Missile is second and Anima Ron is third. It's Brown is third. Starters' orders, and they're off, and running down towards the first. Imperial Black is right up there with them, but it's Gridar on the near side, with also well up there, Drunken Duck in the centre of the course, right over the far side, running fast is Midday Gun, with also Burnt Oak, Burnt Oak on the far side, and on the near side, Gritar. Corbier's just in behind Gritar. They're racing down towards the first. Imperial Black in the centre, and we join John Hanmer. And Burnt Oak on the wide outside from Midday Gun, who's jumped it successfully this year. A bad mistake by Roman General, but I can't see a faller at the first as they jump the second. It's Burnt Oak from Golden Tricks, then Midnight Gun, then Bush Guide, then Earth Stopper, Two Swallows, Spartan Missile, then comes Ashley House. And I haven't seen a fall at the second either. And Burnt Oak and Golden Tricks. Golden Tricks the first to go. Golden Tricks has fallen. And a very bad mistake by Beach King. But I can't see any other faller at the third fence as they jump the fourth. Burnt Oak out clear from Earthstopper. Spartan Missile, two swallows, and over to Julian Wilson. Yes, Burnt Oak is clear from Earth Stopper. Two Swallows on the far side with Midday Gun. And uh, the ones on the far side are clear as they come to the fifth, and Burnt Oak jumps it clear from Earth Stopper second. Then Two Swallows, Midday Gun, and Ashley House is in a prominent position. And uh, they're all over that one as they run down towards Beaches Brook with Burnt Oak and Peter Scudamore in a clear lead. Burnt Oak comes to Beaches, ten lengths clear, and flies over it. Earthstopper over in second, then two swallows, midday gun, then Spartan missile, and uh, Midnight Love is a faller, Midnight Love is a faller, and Clon Turton's a faller, three to one is a faller, and Hazy Dawn is a faller. As they run down towards the canal turn now, having negotiated the seventh fence with no casualties, and Burnt Oak is still well clear from Grease Paint now disputing second with Earthstopper. Then is Two Swallow and Gritter on the inside as they jump the canal turn. And the lead is all over the canal turn. And Burnt Oak well clear. And uh, in second place, disputing it is uh, Grease Paint and Earth Stopper, then Gritter, then Two Swallows and Imperial Black and Yaman and Corbier, Spartan Missile and Tacroy as we rejoin John Hammer. And over the tenth, Burnt Oak is over well clear of Earth Stopper and Grease Paint a mistake, Gritter are a mistake, but he's all right. And as they go to the next open ditch, the eleventh fence, Burnt Oak still well clear of Earth Stopper, Two Swallows, Grease Paint. 
then Imperial Black just in behind them, Corbiers there and Grittar as well there and Silent Valley. And as they go to the 12th, it's Burnt Oak, still clear. Doesn't jump that very well. Our stopper is second, then Grease Paint, Spartan Missile, Two Swallows, Tacroy, then Grittar, Imperial Black, Corbier, Silent Valley, Canford Ginger, Your Man, Ashley House, then Broomy Bank, Midday Gun, and then Eliogarty and Lucky Vane. And then comes points past, but as they head towards the 13th fence, over to Peter O'Sullivan. Yes, and it's Burnt Oak, still a long way clear. A long way clear of Earth Stopper and Grease Paint, then the Grey Two Swallows on the inside, then comes Spot and Missile, then Tacroy. Behind Tacroy is Grittar, then comes Silent Valley, and then comes last year's winner, Corbier, just in behind the leaders with your man chasing him. Coming down now towards the next fence, and it's Burnt Oak, still a long way clear of Earth Stopper and Grease Paint and Spot and Missile and Tacroy and Two Swallows and Grittar, who's on the inside. There be, he's being followed by Corbier. Coming down now towards the fence that'll be the last on the next circuit and Burnt Oak still with a commanding advantage from Earthstopper, Grease Paint, Two Swallows. Imperial Black not far behind the leaders on the inside is Gridar being chased by Corbier. Now they're coming to the chair, one of the most daunting in the race. This is fence number 15, the chair. And it's still Burnt Oak clear of Grease Paint in second. Earthstopper is third. Then Gridar on the far side and Two Swallows. Burnt Oak lands well in the lead from in second place and a faller there and uh, another another captain has gone there and also another faller there is um, the, the Irish horse is Carl's Major has gone there and there was Burnt Oak who cleared the water in the lead from in second place Earth Stopper then comes in third place Grease Paint for Tacroy five on the inside is Gritar six on the outside comes Spartan Missile, then Corbier and Two Swallows, behind them Eliogarty, behind Eliogarty is Brummy Bank, on the outside of Brummy Bank is Imperial Black, behind Imperial Black is Lucky Vane, then Canford Ginger, then your man, behind your man, and uh, joining him now on the far side is Silent Valley, with also up there Ashley House, and they're racing across the Melling Road now. With going up in the centre of the course, Earth Stopper. On the inside, Gritar. On the outside is Grease Paint, and over to John Hanmer. And Burnt Oak still there on the wide outside, too, and Earth Stopper's up with him, so it's Grease Paint and Tack Roy and Points Pass and Spartan Missile. Then Lucky Vane and Corbier tracking the leaders towards the inner over the 18th. Earth Stopper, Grease Paint, Burnt Oak, Tack Roy, then Eliogarty, then Two Swallows and Gritar and Lucky Vane as they come to the big ditch and Grease Paint just about takes the lead but our stopper jumps it better and a faller at that one was Kumbai and another faller would be Fortune Seeker as they jump the next and it's our stopper in the lead then Spartan Missile, Gritar close up as we join Julian Wilson Yes, Grease Paint in the centre of the course, Earth Stopper under the stand rails with Gritter, two swallows towards the centre as they jump the next one, and Elia Gart is right up with them on the far side as well. Lucky Vane made a slight mistake at that one, but they were all over it, and running down to Beaches for the second time, now the leaders are very closely bunched, with two swallows, Elia Gart towards the outside, Grease Paint towards the inside as they jump Beaches, Elia Gart over, Grease Paint makes a mistake, Earth Stopper's over in second. Then two swallows. Hello Dandy. Grittar's well there on the inside. Imperial Black was the faller at Beatrice as they jumped the 23rd fence with Earth Stopper in the lead from Grease Paint and Eliogarty. Behind that comes Grittar and two swallows, then Corbier, then Hello Dandy, then Broomy Bank and Lucky Vane and Fettered Friend as they come to the canal turn where Valerie Order and Bush Guide fell the first time round. But this time it's Grease Paint and Earth Stopper. Eliogarty is third, Grittar is fourth, then the great two swallows. Behind those is. Hello Dandy, then Corbier and Lucky Vane, then Broomy Bank and Fettered Friend as they jump Valentine's. Grease paint over, a length clear from Earth Stopper in second. Hello Gardy weakening now. Hello Dandy goes into third. In fifth is Grease pa is Gritter. Sixth is Corbier, then two swallows and Lucky Vane as we rejoin John Hammer. And a mistake there by Earth Stopper who was in second place and it's Grease Paint out in front. Then Hello Dandy, Ellie Ogarty, and Earth Stopper and Lucky Vane and Two Swallows last ditch, four from home and Hello Dandy's gone right up to Grease Paint. Then in third place, Earth Stopper, four Eliogarty, five Lucky Vane, six Two Swallows, seven Corbier. As they go to the third last, 
and it's Grease Paint from Hello Dandy. Then in third place, our stopper four, Ellie Ogarty. Five is two swallows. Silent Valley's been pulled up. Your man's well behind, but as they go across the Melling Road, it's Hello Dandy going up to join Grease Paint. Then our stopper third, Lucky Vane four, and over to Peter O'Sullivan. And it's still Grease Paint, last year's second in the lead from Hello Dandy, last year's fourth. Then comes Earth Topper with quite a long gap behind him is Lucky Vane. Behind Lucky Vane is last year's winner, Corbier, making good progress. Egli Eliogat is just behind him, and then the Grey Two Swallows, and then comes Feathard Friend, and then behind him is Gritter. As they come down to the second last fence in the national, it's Hello Dandy on the far side as we see them. On the near side is Grease Payne. There's little between the two, Grease Payne and the Sheepskin Nose Band. Hello Dandy lands in the lead, though. Earth Topper is third, and it's Hello Dandy in the lead as they come to the final fence in the 1984 national from Grease. Paint. Earth Stopper is third. Corbier is now fourth. Then comes Lucky Vane over the last fence. Hello Dandy lands in the lead from Grease Paint. Behind them come Earth Stopper and then Corbier. And then comes Lucky Vane racing towards the elbow now with just over a furlong to run of the national. And it's Hello Dandy being challenged again by Grease Paint. Hello Dandy is wandering off a true line. Grease Paint sticking to the far rail as they come to the furlong pole. It's Grease Paint on the far side. Hello Dandy on the near side. Corbier is trying to get on terms with them. There is Grease Paint on the far side. Hello Dandy on the near side. There's nothing between them as they come to the line. Hello Dandy on the near side is just going to win it. Hello Dandy is one of the Grease Paint. Is second and third is Corbier. Fourth Lucky Vane and five Earth Stopper. That's the one, two, three, four, five. Then came two Swallows and behind him Fethard, Friend and Brummy Bank and Juvago de Nervi for France. Then Gritar and Hillis Lane and Tackroy and behind them came Beach King and W again, and Ellie Ogarty, and Spartan Missile and your man, and this is the winner, Hello Dandy. Hello Dandy, and Neil Doughty, his third attempt at the National, wins it at his third attempt, 26-year-old Neil Doughty, and Gordon Richards, who won it in 1978 with Lucius, has won it in 1984. So with the record 23 horses finishing, this is how they fared. First, Hello Dandy, 13 to one. Second was Grease Paint, 9 to 1 favourite. Third, Corbier, 16 to 1. And fourth, Lucky Vane, 12 to 1. And the rest, fifth, Earth Stopper. In sixth place, Two Swallows. Seventh, Fethard Friend. Eighth was Brumy Bank. Nine was Javago de Nevi. Tenth was Gritar. Eleventh, Hill of Slain. Twelfth was Tacroy. Thirteenth, W again. In 14th place, Beach King. 15th was Eliogarty. 16th, Spartan Missile. 17th, Yearman. 18th, Falloon. 19th, Another Captain. 20th, Midday Gun. 21st, Points Pass. 22nd was Jacko. And last was Canford Virginia. And the ones that didn't finish well, this is what happened to them. Golden Tricks was the first to fall at fence number three. And at Beaches Brook, first time round, there was fence number six. And down went Midnight Love, Clonth Turton, Hazy Dawn, and three to one. At the canal turn, Bush Guide fell. That was fence number eight. At number 13, Roman General was a casualty there. And at fence number 15, the chair, Ashley House, and at Carl's Wager, both fell. At fence number 17, the drunken duck pulled up. At fence number 18, doorstep fell. Fence number 19, fortune seeker and Kumbi unseated their riders, and pilot officer refused. At fence number 22, Beecher's book second time round, burnt oak pulled up, and imperial black fell. And at fence number 27, silent valley. Good evening. Every year one feels that Cheltenham has reached its capacity, and yet every year more people seem to come. Today's champion hurdle crowd was quite simply colossal. 
the inevitable huge Irish invasion, sharing the spring weather with jumping enthusiasts from all over Britain, from Cornwall to Perthshire. For the second year running, there was an odds-on favourite for the champion hurdle. Last year, Dawn Run narrowly landed the odds for Ireland. Now could Brown's Gazette, the ex-Irish horse formerly owned by and now ridden by the young Dermot Brown, take the prize back to Yorkshire, where he's now trained by Monica Dickinson. In the paddock, Brown's Gazette didn't please everyone. He was sweating and tending to be on edge. Nonetheless, he went off favourite at six to four on. Or would the championship title be recaptured by Gay Brief, the horse who won the race two seasons ago, but missed last year's race because of injury? With Gay Brief trained by Mercy Rymel, either way, it looked odds on to be Ladies' Day. Steve Smith Eccles was the jockey on See You There, John Frankham having injured his right leg in a fall in the previous race. It turned out to be a dramatic race and an even more dramatic start. And it's the first time when Brown's Gazette has run right out wide of the others. Dermot Brown bringing him back to join him now, but he's. Uh, He's trailing him at the moment, lost quite a bit of ground at the start, the favourite, quite a sensation, he heard a buzz in the stands as he jumps the first flight well last, and they're being led by Northern Trial from Desert Orchid and Fred Kateri and then Gay Brief. Then comes Amarok and Central Iron and, and Little Ron over over on the far side. Statesmanship's behind them. And Brown's Gazette is still the back marker, having swerved right across the course as the tape rose. And Northern Trial taking him along at a great gallop from the Grey Desert Orchid. Then Fred Kateri and Ron over has moved into fourth. Then comes See You Then and Statesmanship and behind them Amarok and Gay Brief. And then stands Pride. And uh, Brown's Gazette making ground all the time on the inside, but Northern Trial taking him along still at a very fast pace, about three lengths up on Desert Orchid, who's got an eight-length uh, lead now on Fred Kateri and Ron over with See You There next, and then comes Statesmanship and Gay Brief, and on the inner stands Pride, and then comes Amarok, and then Miller Hill, and then Passage Creeper, then comes Brown's Gazette on the inside, then Central Line and Robin Wonder, and still Northern Trial blazing the trail from Desert Orchid, a long, long gap to Fred Kateri and run over and see you then. Then as they come down to the third, Miller Hill moves into sixth, but it's Northern Trial, a long way clear as they come to it. Jumps it clear of Desert Orchid, a good ten lengths clear. He is a Fred Kateri and run over and then see you then. Then comes uh, Miller Hill. Just in behind Miller Hill is Statesmanship, then Brown's Gazette with Stan's Pride next. And the back marker now is Central Line, the fourth they're coming down to now of the eight flights in the Waterford Crystal Champion hurdle. And Northern Trial still making it from Desert Orchid. And these two are a long way clear of the remainder who are headed by Fred Kateri, then run over on the inside. Then making ground towards the outer is Passage Creeper as they race towards the next flight. And still Northern Trial in the lead from Desert Orchid. Gay Brief has now moved into third. Passage Creeper is next. Fred Kateri has lost ground. Then comes See You Then. Run over has lost ground too. Northern Trial clear as they race towards the top of the hill. Gay Brief and Passage Creeper next. Then comes Fred Kateri and See You Then. Then Statesmanship and then Brown's Gazette making progress now. But Northern Trial with a commanding advantage. Richard Dunwoody with three left to jump in the champion hurdle. Northern Trial, the long way clear of the 1983 champion, Gay Brief. Then comes Passage, and then Central Line and Amarok. And this is Nicky Henderson's not extended. But what of Brown's Gazette? Well, after the stewards had inquired into the incident, Dermot Brown explained what happened. We lined up, lined up, and, you know, once they go on, you know, line up straight, but... He's, um, we can watch it in a minute on the he's screen. A, he's a strong horse, you know, and you see, like, he was just, he was going to jump off too quick. You see, look, and he's going to upset the tape. You see, there, he run off to the side, you know, he, um, <clears throat> when I lined up, I was walking in, he used to jump off and ready for to do his job. And he was jumping out, he was going too quick, I was going to go straight through the tape. So I tried to take him back off the tape. When he's done that, he's kind of lunged forward, he's a bit well. And, and I've gone, I mean, I've lost 20 lengths more. I've never had a chance to get into the race easily. I've got to try and creep there and get there, try and give him a breather. But well, you can't do it in the champion hurdle, you know. You, you, you're all the time niggling a bit to get there to make a challenge. And then by the time he came to the last, he you know, shot his ball, so to speak. So bad luck there for Dermot Brown. And, of course, even worse luck for John Frankham. The race, in fact, was run in course record time. 
Later on, I asked Steve Smith Eccles when, in fact, he knew that he got the ride on the horse. About 15 minutes before the race. Um, Nicky came in and had a word with John, and he said he was a bit shook up and didn't feel too good. So he turned around to me and told me to get the colours on. How did the race go? You, you can't have had much time to plan it. No, I had a quick word with John. Um, they went a real good clip, which in actual fact did suit me, because he does take a ride old. And sat fifth, six on the inner, jumped really super. On the horse at all before? Never sat on his back at all, no. And after Ch Chepster last Saturday, you must have wondered if you'd been sitting on anything at the meeting, because you practically got murdered there, didn't you? I did. I got brought down in the last race, and I was chase. Um, I was laying there on the floor beside my horse, and as he got up, he took me with him. My leg was hung up in the irons and the reins, and three or four strides, it looked really nasty. So, you know, it's just a look at the game, really. Well, see, if John's a friend of yours, I know, so I suppose you'll buy him a bottle tonight, will you? Well, the amount of favours I've done him, uh, he should be buying me a crate. You better buy him a small one. I think I'll buy him a whiskey, just to keep him happy. And one note of sadness in the race, Northern Trial was killed in his fall at the last. Well, the day started with a rather weaker challenge than usual by the Irish in the Waterford Crystal Supreme Novices Hurdle. Numerically, at least, they only had four runners in the race, although in quality terms, they did have Ararun as a very warm favourite. In fact, Ararun's rider, Tony Mullins, thought that his mate in danger might be the Scottish horse, Harry Hastings. How right he proved to be. And as they run downhill to the war towards the third, Arrow Run in the lead from Charco Wally on the inside. Then comes Harry Hastings and then Welsh Warrior. Little gap to Cat Size. Behind Cat Size is Hypnotic over that one. Arrow Run on the outside of Harry Hastings. Then still in third, Charco Wally. Then Welsh Warrior. Then comes Cat Size and Hypnotic. Behind them, Down Flight on the inside. Then comes Kesslin. Music be magic. And uh, behind them, uh, come home, Kitty. Coming to the fourth, Anna Run and Tony Mullins in the lead from Harry Hastings, the horse he nominated this morning as his danger. Then comes Hypnotic in third place now, moving up towards the outside. Welsh Warrior, a very close fourth. Then Charcoal Wally. Cat Size is next, behind Cat Size, Roikas making ground, and then comes Kathleen, and then Sierra Baron. Behind Sierra Baron is Down Flight, and then comes the Brina making ground. That was the fifth arrow run from Harry Hastings. Then in third place is Hypnotic, just behind Hypnotic is Welsh Warrior, then a gap to Cat Size, Roikas, Sierra Baron, behind uh, Sierra Baron is Kesslin, then comes Just Alec making quite good progress behind the leaders, they've got three flights left to jump, it's Harry Hastings who's taken over now from Arrow Run, then Hypnotic, then comes Welsh Warrior, Still making ground behind the leaders is Just Alec as they come down to the third last. Harry Hastings from Arrow Run, then Hypnotic and Welsh Warrior. They're racing down towards the second last, and Harry Hastings has taken over now. Sierra Baron was a faller at the third last, coming to the second last now. Harry Hastings in the lead for the north, for Scotland, in fact, from Arrow Run for Ireland, and then comes Welsh Warrior in third. Kesslin's improving well, then Hypnotic. Then comes Meningi and then just Alec under pressure. They're racing to the final flight. It's Harry Hastings being chased now by Kesslin in second over on the far side. Is Arrow Run at the last flight? Harry Hastings is going to jump at three lengths clear from Kesslin second and Arrow Run third. Then comes Welsh Borea and racing into the closing stages. It's Harry Hastings from Kesslin putting in a good challenge as they race up towards the line. It's Harry Hastings still being chased by Kesslin, but he's going to hold him as they come to the line. Harry Hastings wins it, second is Kesslin, third is the Brina. fourth game, Welsh Warrior. Well, with me I've got a very happy man, John Wilson, he's just trained his first winner at Cheltenham, and three weeks ago this horse, John, was a definite non-runner. That's correct, the horse incurred an injury after winning it here, and um, he was very doubtful, and his fitness was at a question right up to the last minute. What was the problem? The problem was the horse knocked into himself when he beat hand over at here in the Ladbrokes qualifier. And, quite honestly, we just thought there was no chance of getting him ready in time for today, but the, he's such a class horse, and the, the more we worked him, the better he got. And as you see, the, the effect today was quite electric. So all credit to John Wilson there, who's had a real job keeping that big horse sound. 
Well, the Irish went to recover their losses in the next race, the Arkell Challenge Trophy, on Buck House. He was considered likely to be better suited by the fairly fast conditions than Ireland's other challenger, Boreen Prince. Anyway, the Irish made him favourite at 100 to 30. And it's very promising in the, in the, on the inside, in the centre Buck House, Townley Stone over on the far side. Then comes Kerner Moore improving on the outside. Boreen Prince still in contention. So is Roadster as they come down to the second last. Very promising. Third last. Very promising. Mistake there again by Kerner Moore. Very promising. And Buckhouse as they come down to the second last. Very promising. And Buckhouse together. Boreen Prince has moved into third. Then comes Kerner Moore on the outside. Buckhouse and very promising together. Then Boreen Prince and then Kerner Moore. Behind them comes Roadster. They're racing into the home turn now and it's Buckhouse with the advantage from Very Promising. Boreen Prince putting in a good run though in third then comes Roadster as they race towards the final fence. It's Buckhouse being challenged by Boreen Prince. Very Promising on the stand side. Wide open race over on the far side. Buckhouse on the near side. Very Promising. Between horses it's Boreen Prince. It's Buckhouse with the advantage now from Boreen Prince as they race into the closing stages. Boreen Prince and Buckhouse. There's nothing between them. Boreen Prince getting the upper hand as they race to the line. Boreen Prince is with the Arkle at the line boring princes of in a second is Buckhouse and third very promising but here you can see Boots Madden who's only recently got the ride back on this horse coming to challenge Tommy Carmody in front on this very game Buckhouse they go for a good one Buckhouse rises half a length clear and in fact gets away quicker too Boreen Prince just seemed to dwell a little bit as he got close but here now Boots Madden who has slapped him down the shoulder but not really gone for him just a slap down the shoulder knows he's got victory in sight but very promising running a great race back in third place a long way from the others uh, across the course but not behind them he's run a super race but it is victory to Boreen Prince and remember last time out he was very mulish in whipping round today he went like an arrow. It was Franken's fall on the reject that ruled him out of the champion hurdle. Franken's foot was caught up in the stirrup and badly twisted when his mount tried to regain his footing. It kept Franken out of the saddle for the rest of the afternoon, and whether he rides at the rest of the meeting remains to be seen. Well, Alan's hope for the Waterford Crystal Stairs hurdle was another shot, the mount of the leading amateur, Ted Walsh. But here the home side had plenty of gunfire, notably in the shape of two horses owned by the same owner. They were Crimson Embers and Rose Ravine, both owned by Mrs Pam Smart. Ironically, Crimson Embers, the outsider of the two in the betting, wore the first colours, the Cerise cap. Once again, it turned out to be the most dramatic of races. Rose Ravine, two from home with the advantage. Rose Ravine lands in the lead from Aonok in second and third, Bajan Sunshine, and these three are now clear of another shot as moving into fourth place. And on the near side, it's Rose Ravine, Crimson Embers on the outer, in between horses Aonok, and another shot still making fast progress. But Rose Ravine with the advantage as they come towards the last, being pressed by its table companion, Crimson Embers. It's Rose Ravine from Crimson Embers and Aonok, then comes another shot in Bajan Sunshine. Rose Ravine from Crimson Embers, these two. Crimson Embers veers off a true line. Hamp, uh, Rose Ravine veers off a true line and hampers Crispin Embers and they're going to finish one, two. Rose Ravine wins it from Crimson Embers, but there could be an objection. Rose Ravine's won it all right from Crimson Embers. So a one-two for Mrs. Pam Smart, and after a lengthy steward's inquiry, surprisingly, the stewards allowed the places to remain unaltered, which was very popular with the punters because that was the first winning favourite of the meeting. Here now, the full afternoon's results. The first race, the 2.15, went to number 10, Harry Hastings, 14 to 1. Second, number 14, Keslin, 20 to 1. And third, number 26, the Breener, 14 to 1. The 2.50, first number 1, Boreen Prince, 15 to 2. Second number three, Buckhouse, 100 to 30 favourite. And third number 19, very promising, 5 to 1. The 330, the champion hurdle. First number 15, see you then, 16 to 1. Second number 14, Robin Wonder, 66 to 1. And third number 17, Stan's Pride, 100 to 1. The 4-5, first number 28, Rose Ravine, 5 to 1 favourite. The second number 11, Crimson Embers, 12 to 1. And third number three, Aonoch, 6 to 1. The 440, first number 14, Glide Court, 11 to 1. Second number 16, Mount Oliver, 9 to 1. Third number 10, Brunton Park, 11 to 4 favourite. And fourth number 15, Mr. Donut, 25 to 1. And the 515, first number 1, Kathy's Lad, 7 to 1. Second number 20, Midnight Song, 33 to 1. 
Third number 14, Trelock, 9 to 1. And fourth number 21, Lulav, 40 to 1. Well, tomorrow sees the finest race for the Queen Mother Two Mark Champion Chase for a number of years, with Badsworth Boy bidding to become the first horse ever to win the race in three successive years. As they come to the final fence now, Badsworth Boy trying to win it for the second year in succession, jumps it well, Little Bay jumps it second, Artifice jumps it third, and four, Drum Gorda, and five, Rath Gorman, and racing into the closing stages. And Badsworth Boy makes it a three-timer in the Queen Mother Champion Chase for Michael Dickinson as he wins it very easily. Badsworth Boy is the winner. But will he beat the Irish challenger, Bob Slyne, the brilliant winner of last year's Arkell Challenge Trophy? Bob's line with his white face showing just marginally in the lead on the near side. Neil Doherty on the far side. On, and there it was just Bob's line from uh, his ride as they race into the closing stages. It's Bob's line on the near side. his ride on the far side. Bob's line on the near side is going to win it. And this is another in the Oracle for Ireland. Bob's line is the winner of the Oracle. Second is his ride. Well, that's all tomorrow. But tonight, the toast of the Cotswolds are Steve Smith Eccles, Nick Henderson. Hand 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 it's a dish fit for a queen. A battle of giants between one of the finest two mile chasers of the past 20 years, Badsworth Boy, bidding to become the first horse ever to win three successive Queen Mother two mile champion chases, and ridden despite a recent severe injury by Robert Earnshaw. And the Irish rising star Bob's Lion, ridden by Ireland's champion jockey Frank Berry, and carrying the hopes of those Irish visitors still with financial resources to spare. The betting favoured Bob's Lion, a warm favourite at six to four on. Billed as the race of the meeting, would it be an anticlimax? The crowd was soon to know. Now to the water. Over the water. Farbridge, Coyote, Bathworth Boy, Left Bank and Bob's Line. Now the first of the ditches. Only two ditches this time. Farbridge, Coyote, Bathworth Boy, Bob's Line and Left Bank. Another plain fence. The eighth before the last ditch. Farbridge, clear of Coyote. Bathworth Boy, Bob's Line and Left Bank. Now they're racing towards the final ditch in the Queen Mother Champion Chase. Four fences only from home. And Bob's line, the odds-on favorite, is the back marker of the quintet. As Farbridge jumps it in the lead from Coyote, Badsworth Boy, a mistake there by left bank. Bob's line goes fourth. Racing towards the top of the hill now. Farbridge from Coyote. Bob's line improves a little on the inside of Badsworth Boy. Left bank still in touch, though, in fifth place. They've got three fences left to jump. Frank Berry choosing the inside on Bob's line. As they run down towards the third last, Far Bridge from Coyote. Bob's line and Badsworth Boy. And Bob's line a fall up. Bob's line has gone. He was cantering at the time. He's gone at the third last. Bob's line, a faller, and Badsworth Boy eases into the lead. Both horse and jockey are up all right. Badsworth Boy jumps it in the lead from Farbridge and Coyote. And Badsworth Boy now just has to jump one fence to become the first horse in national hunt history to win this two-mile champion chase. The Queen Mother champion chase and the crowd already roaring him home as Badsworth Boy comes to the last, ears pricked, being chased forlornly by Farbridge. Badsworth Boy jumps it from Farbridge in second, Coyote third, and as they race up towards the line, Badsworth Boy strides away to win it in tremendous style. Badsworth Boy makes turf history. He wins the Queen Mother champion chase. Second is Farbridge. It's going to be close for third with Coyote just holding left bank. And the luckless Bob line, Bob's line, has already been remounted. There he is. Well, the talking point for years and years to come will be what would have been the outcome excepting this uncharacteristic error by Bob's line when it looked as though he was cantering. Here's Richard.
Yes, indeed, they were playing cat and mouse, and Frank Berry was absolutely taking a pull. And this is a dangerous place, this downhill fence that's caught so many out. Frank's gone for it, though. He's not hooking back as he sees the fence. He's right at the inside, where it's bigger than anywhere else. Just lands a little bit too steep, and there you are. That's the penalty at the downhill fence, I'm afraid. And there's only one winner. Look at Badsworth, boys. He comes for home. His ears pricked, and his four owners are such good pals. And what fun they've had with this horse. Look at him pricking his ears now getting in a bit close and that's something he couldn't do when he was young he used to jump long low and flat and it was his undoing on several occasions behind him there uh, Farbridge coming to pick up a very handsome consolation prize of £8,455, 75p for the Duke of Athol. It pays to come and take these good things on doesn't it because jumping the fences are there to be negotiated once again the old fellow he was the veteran of the party 10 year old has done it in the smoothest possible style. So, for the third year in succession, Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth the Queen Mother presented the trophy to a sporting partnership from the north of England. But what would have been the result if Bob's line hadn't fallen? A question I put to the winning jockey, Robert Earnshaw. Uh, I don't know. It would have been very, very close. Very close. Um, I wouldn't like to say. How well were you going at the time? I was going very well, but uh, I had a look across and Frank was going very well as well. How would you compare him today to the last couple of years? Did he feel the same horse or even better? Uh, I wouldn't say better, but uh, almost as good anyway. How did he jump today? A little bit lower, one or two, but he, he, always, he tends to have that habit, you know. He doesn't, he doesn't hurt his back very well. Um, but he, so long as he gets away with it, he's all right. <laughs> So, a big anticlimax for the Irish with Bob's line. I asked Frank Berry what exactly happened. I hadn't gone a great gallop early on. We got to the last ditch, and uh, I wanted to take a bit of closer order on him and uh, come mad alive down the hill on the bridle, and he met the third last perfect. He threw a great jump at it, but just didn't get out his landing gear quick enough, you know. Just tipped up at the back of it. One of those things. Did you ever think he was going to come up at you or not? I thought for a strike, I thought going down, just halfway down, he might get away with another or just pecking at the back of it, but we went past return, you know, just bad luck, you know. It's a pity because he's never looked like being on the floor before. He's usually a brilliant, brilliant leper and uh, just one of those things, you know, but he's all right and there'll be another day, you know. Do you think he would have won the race? Well, Bob is going well at the time. We're both travelling well. I think it would have been a really good race. I mean, it had been very interesting to see how it had worked out anyway, you know. Will he beat him next year? I think so. I think he'll have learned his lesson and he's, he's young horse, he's years on his side and I think he'll be back all being well next year. Well, the Irish and notably Frank Berry seem to dominate the season's most valuable novices chase, his son Alliance chase, with Antarctic Bay and Lucesis. Antarctic Bay in particular was strongly fancied. He was the mount of Frank Berry and he went off a warm favourite. After sign again had crashed at the last ditch, it developed into a thrilling race. Racing downhill now to the third last in the Sun Alliance chase. And it's Dark Hansel on the inside of Zamandra. Then comes Catchphrase, Antarctic Bay, improving steadily. And then Lucesis at the third last. Three from home, this Dark Hansel lands in the lead from Zamandra, Antarctic Bay, and Catchphrase. Racing towards the second last now. Dark Hansel from Zamandra and Antarctic Bay in third. At the second last last fence. Dark Hansel, Zamandra and Antarctic Bay. Antarctic Bay made a bad mistake there but lost little impetus. They're racing round the home turn now with one fence left to jump. Antarctic Bay making ground on the inside. Frank Berry and coming to take a fractional advantage now from Dark Hansel. Antarctic Bay and Dark Hansel as they race towards the last. Zamandra back in third then catch phrase. This is the final fence of the Sun Alliance. Antarctic Bay and Dark Hansel. Antarctic Bay on the far side. Dark Hansel on the near side, racing into the closing stages. Antarctic Bay on the far side, Dark Hansel on the near side. Frank Berry achieving consolation here for the defeat or the fall of Bob's line as Antarctic Bay wins the Sun Alliance and second is Dark Hansel and third is Amandra, four is Catchphrase and five is Lucesis. He's certainly come to the rescue of a lot of Irish punters today. And the Irish really needed that one. 
Well, earlier in the day, there was a big gamble on the ex-Irish mayor, Sheer Gold, in the Sun Alliance hurdle. Although there was also strong support for the new market fancy, Azir. The race turned out to be something of a procession. Racing down towards this one, and ten of spades, and Azir together from the liquidator under pressure. Then comes Sheer Gold, still making progress, but under pressure. Behind them come Torridge, and behind Torridge is ten plus and Oxy Cottage, and then over the last, as they come to the second last, Azir landed in the lead from ten of spades, then Sheer Gold. Behind Sheer Gold is the liquidator, and then over the last, Azir and Ronnie Began have sprinted clear as they race towards the final flight. It's Azir from Sheer Gold moving into second on the stand side. Ten of Spain's third. Azir looks as though he's only got to jump. It jumps it well. Hits it hard but gets away with it. And it's Azir now being chased by Sheer Gold all the way to the line. It's Azir from Sheer Gold then over the last. Azir is going to win the Sun Alliance Novices Hurdle. Striding away with Ronnie Began to win it very well indeed. And at the line Azir is the winner. Sheer Gold is a gallon second and third over the last and for Torridge, they're the one, two, three, four. And Azir landed some very good bets indeed there at nine to one. But the biggest field of the day was for the Coral Golden Hurdle final. And here the gamble was on Banker's Benefit, the Irish runner ridden by Nile Madden. Turned out to be another thrilling finish. As they come down to the second last flight now, Bankers Benefit and Jambridge Jupiter land together from Von Trapp improving on the outside. Racing round the home turn now with one flight left to jump in the Coral Final. And it's Bankers Benefit on the far side, Von Trapp on the near side. Between horses, Jambridge Jupiter. As they come to the last flight, it's going to be Von Trapp lands in the lead from Bankers Benefit on the far side. Von Trapp now from Bankers Benefit and Jambridge Jupiter and Ron Lee Run producing a very good run too as they race into the closing stages. It's Von Trapp now as they race up towards the line. It's Von Trapp from Ron Lee Run and Bankers Benefit as they come to the line. Von Trapp has won it. Bankers Benefit is just second probably ahead of Ron Lee Run with Inter Melody, the finisher on the far side. Could be a photo for the minor placings. But no doubt about the winner, Von Trapp, as we can review with Richard Pittman. And look at Richard Dunwoody on the outside there, simply cantering on this horse. Gets a good one at the last, as he needs. But as I told you, don't expect to see this one too soon. He's produced him just right, and he goes away really nicely now to go and win for Michael Oliver. A good trainer, only has very few horses these days, and certainly deserves many more. But by golly, they do run for him. Richard Dunwoody, as we've said, a star of the future, getting his first winner at the festival meeting, his first season as a professional, and by golly, this boy has had some mixed fortunes on this horse. He gave him a crashing fall here over fences, uh, Von Trapp did, on his 21st birthday, but he was able to go to the party that night. I should think he'll have a party tonight because there's only one winner in it, and a desperate thing for second place there, probably run, Lee, run. And so to the highlight of the meeting, tomorrow's race for the Tote Cheltenham Gold Cup, which in the regrettable absence of Borough Hill Loud looks the most open Gold Cup for a number of years, with the bookmakers now betting six to one the field. Well, the gamble of the race has been the novice Drummer Downey, who's been backed down from 40 to one to 13 to two, largely on the strength of his brilliant win in Ascot's Reynolds Town Chase. Drummer Downey, Hugh Davis, still three to four lengths clear. He hasn't made a bad mistake so far, and it looks as though he's just got to jump this one to win. Drummer Downey comes to the last, meets it right, he's over clear. Three, four lengths clear from Ryman Reason. Ryman Reason putting in a terrific spirited challenge on the far side, but Drummer Downey gallops on. A brilliant front running performance at the line. Drummer Downey wins it. Second is Ryman Reason. I put it to his rider, Hugh Davis, after only four completed steeplechases, did he feel that Drummer Downey was ready for the Gold Cup? Um, well, we thought, well, now would be as be best a chance as, as any. Um, next season he might not be going at all. He's, he's been a funny character and last season he was pulling himself up and all sorts of silly sort of things he was doing. Um, he's running freely now and he's, do, he's jumping really well. Might as well take a chance. What aspect of the race worries you most? Um, that Rainbow Warrior is another horse that, that goes off in front uh, from Ireland, and I've never had a horse um, come with me for, the, for any length of time um, in the past four races. Um, hope it doesn't unduly bother him too much, on the if, ground, obviously. 
if things do go your way, do you think you'll win? Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure. I mean, he, if everything work, works according to plan, he'll take, he'll, take, he'll take a good horse to pass me. There's three horses there who are proven horses. Forgive and forget, Earl's Brig and, and Coombs Ditch. They're all proven stayers. Um, but they'll have to be on top hole to get by me. Pretty confident Hugh Davis there. Here now, the latest batting from Ladbrokes on the Gold Cup. And it's 6-1 to one, Coombs Ditch and Earl's Brig, 13-2 to two, Drummer Downey, 7-1 to one, Forgive and Forget, 8-1 to one, Right Hand Man and Wayward Lad, 9-1 to one, Half Free, 20-1. to one. Good evening. The Gold Cup without Borough Hill Lad was to be like Hamlet without the Prince. Well, that was the theory. In fact, the colossal crowd, once again graced by the presence of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth the Queen Mother, enjoyed a race that was possibly one of the most exciting of the post-war era. Beforehand, it was very much a race of ifs and buts, with about half a dozen possible winners. And that's exactly how it turned out to be. In the end, it was Coombs Ditch that started favourite at four to one. In the paddock and parade, he looked composed and relaxed, facing the race that had led to his dramatic collapse two years ago. Another big fancy on the day was forgive and forget, even though earlier this week, a minor injury had made it doubtful that he could run. The joker in the pack was Drummer Downey, the horse with a mind of his own who loves to go off in front. But on Go Cup Day, was he in the mood? At the post, the weather created a dramatic scenario. Peter O'Sullivan picks up the story. So, ten left to jump as they go out into the country. Intact, all standing, all 15. Drummer Downey, clear of half free, who's being tracked by Ballina Carolad, right hand man. Then comes Earlsbrig Rainbow Warrior, Forgive and Forget and Coombs Ditch and Marine Prince. At the next, Drummer Downey jumps the 13th. Not two foot perfect at that one. They're all safely over it though. Santola Boy, the back marker, coming down to the water now for the final time. Drummer Downey from half free, Ballina Carolad and right hand man. Then comes Earls Brig, then Forgive and Forget and Rainbow Warrior and Coombs Ditch improving. The third of the four ditches, Drummer Downey from half free, Ballina Carolad behind him. Right hand man, then Earls Brig, then Forgive and Forget making ground on the inside, then Rainbow Warrior and Coombs Ditch who's making a bit of ground too over the 16th. Drummer Downey from half free, Ballina Carolad, right hand man, Earls Brig, Coombs Ditch improving, then comes Forgive and Forget and then Rainbow Warrior. Racing towards the final ditch now, six from home. Drummer Downey lands clear. Earls Brick making ground on the outside of half free, then Ballina Carolad, then right hand man, then, for, then Forgive and Forget. Behind them Coombs Ditch and then Barine Prince and Greenwood Lad has been pulled up. Racing downhill now and Earls Brick has. Earls Brig improving his position, but Drummer Downey is still with the advantage. From in second place, half free. Forgive and Forget has moved into third, and Coombs Ditch four and five. Earls Brig close. Four from home this. Drummer Downey and Hugh Davis land well clear. Still beginning the run downhill now, and a long run towards the third last. Half free coming there strongly on the inside. Forgive and Forget has moved into third. Coombs Ditch is fourth. This is the third last fence now. Dramadani and uh, half half free, half free on the inside. Dramadani, then Forgive and Forget and Coombs Ditch. Then comes Boreen Prince. Just two fences left to jump now in the Tote Cheltenham Gold Cup. And it's half free being pressed again by Dramadani. Then comes Forgive and Forget and Coombs Ditch putting in a challenge towards the stand side. But it's half free as they come. Forgive and forget. And predictably, the Queen Mother braved the weather to present the Gold Cup to Mr. Tim Kilroy. So a major triumph there for trainer Jimmy Fitzgerald. I put it to him that earlier in the week, it was really touch and go. Well, on Monday morning, after uh, reading The Sporting Life and seeing that the favourite uh, was out, I was having a cup of tea and uh, my son Timothy came in and said to better come out and look at Forgive and Forget. He's got heat and he's off four foot. And he had quite a lot of heat in it and quite a pulse. And uh, Edmund Collins, our vet, came in and the blacksmith 
and couldn't find anything in the foot. Uh, they thought he might have a bit of a corn, but uh, we daren't dig down and try and find it anyway. Yesterday the heat started to go out of it, and uh, last night it was 100%. But he ran with his steel shoe on him today, we didn't dare take it off. So for 48 hours it really was in the balance? 48 hours, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the race today, um, were you always happy? Well, I thought Mark gave him a super ride. You know, he, he had him in a lovely position all the time. He never had too much ground to make up. He took him round the inside and he jumped really well for him. And, uh, you know, he couldn't have given him a better ride. He never rode a horse better in his life. Well, Mark, many congratulations. How did the race go? Very well indeed. Um, just took my time a bit early. Gave me a chance to settle. He jumped very well through the race and um, was, was going really well at the top of the hill. I was just happy enough to sit there and wait until after the last, if it was, and, and things went very, very well. How did he jump through the race? Very, very well. Um, he, he tends to be a bit messy sometimes, but I think it's it's just that when he when he's racing with good horses and a good gallop, he, he's he's a hell of a lot better than what he is when he's when he's just um, pottering around, you know. When did you start to think you could win the race? Well, at the top of the hill, I was very, very confident, unless something drastic was going to happen or something like that. But um, was was going really well then. But you held on until the last. Indeed. Um, we had to bear in mind it was three and a quarter miles. I mean, the only time you ran in that, well, the furthest he's gone was three miles here last year at uh, Sun Alliance Chase. You know, so we just had to bear in mind that it's three and a quarter. But when you've gone, the response was terrific. Indeed, yes, he quickened up well. He, he jumped the last really well and, and, and landed running. And he's quickened well up the hill then. He's, he's, he's kept going really well. Is he a good Gold Cup winner or could he be a really great horse one day? Yeah, I think he's a fair good good horse, you know. He's always threatened to be in and he's just proved it today, you know. I think he's, he's, he's not a bad type of horse at all. And that's some understatement. Well, the day began with the biggest betting race of the meeting, the Daily Express Triumph Hurdle, in which four horses were back to win fabulous fortunes. First bout, Wing and a Prayer, and the Irish pair, Tonbad and Dokas. In the end, it was Wing and a Prayer who went off favourite at four to one. But backers knew their fate some way from home. Pagan Sun gone on from Hieronymus, Brimstone Lady over the third, Pucker Major next, and Hieronymus jumped right out to the right there and lost a great deal of ground. Pagan Sun towards the right of the picture, right up against the rail, with Brimstone Lady right upside her as they come down to the next, against the grain, first part over on the far side, right up with them. So as they go to the fifth, Pagan Sun on the inside, Brimstone Lady in the centre, first bout on the outside, Try to Stop Me is next with Wing and a Prayer on the inside, Whiskey Eyes is quite close to the lead, and the back marker at the moment is Big E with Woodway also uh, in rear. And as they race towards the third last flight, it's Pagan Sun and Brimstone Lady disputing it ahead of first bout. Behind first bout is Pucker Major, then comes Wing and a Prayer. Over the third last, three from home, Brimstone Lady, and first bout on the outside, Pagan Sun. Then comes Whiskey Eyes, not far off the lead. Quick Step goes up on the outside. Wing and a Prayer is losing ground, and Brimstone Lady is the leader now as they run downhill. Brimstone Lady from first bout and Quick Step. Then comes Try to Stop Me, Whiskey Eyes. As they run downhill, Pagan Sun is in sixth place. Brimstone Lady on the inside of first bout, then quick step, then try to stop me. As they come to the second last flight in the Daily Express Triumph Hurdle, Brimstone Lady on the inside lands just fractionally in the lead from first bout. Quick step. Then making good progress is Tereus. But it's first bout who's taken it up now. First bout in the lead as Brimstone Lady loses ground. Quick step is coming there on the stand side. Try to stop me just in behind the leaders. Tereus is still making progress. Uh, coming down now towards the final flight and it's first bout with the advantage. Mark Miller on the stand side, but first bout is going to jump it in the lead. First bout lands in the lead. Mark Miller on the stand side. No harm done over on the far side, producing a good run too. It's first bout from no harm done as they race into the closing stages. First bout and Steve Smith Eccles as they race towards the line from no harm done. John Joe O'Neill and also against the grain and at the line. First bout has won it from against the grain and no harm done. That's the one, two, three. Very close for fourth.
uh, Steve Smith Eccles had gone, he got the first run, and they've got it all to do. A good jump at the last, he stood off it, gets plenty of ground, and only a mistake by him there would have given the followers any chance at all. Against the grain is still only sixth at this point, but he is making running uh, on the rails and really making ground with every stride. But no one's going to catch this winner. He's gone from a long way out. It had been a fairly good gallop with several confirmed pacemakers making sure of that. And Steve Smith e Eccles going for his third win so far. Well, he must be delighted. Nicky Henderson had never had a festival winner before, and now he's had three. And he hasn't finished yet. Remember, he's got classified in the last race. As he goes to the line, you can see against the grain really striding there david nicholson still hasn't had a festival winner either and he's getting so close but it has eluded him it was a third winner of the meeting for steve smith echoes well steve uh, you look as though you've just done three rounds with muhammad ali but in fact you must be very happy with that success on first bout yeah it's been a great meeting for me uh, they're all running well uh the fellow that did this actually green bramble he was absolutely trotting in he fell at the second last. He went down at the second last. He didn't make that much of a mistake, but uh, I think it was going too well. It just momentum tipped him up. Did you get a kick or? No, I didn't. I rolled under the rails out of the way, and I think it was just the initial impact of my head against the ground just tore the skin above the eye. But nothing was going to stop you riding first bout. He... No, he's a good horse. He's done it well. He's proved it today. He's a bit of a baby over her. He just had the two runs. He hasn't beaten very much, but it's been the way he's been running. <laughs> yeah, I mean two runs he had, I mean, he absolutely trotted in. Uh, you know, he's had to go and prove himself today, and he, he's done it really well. And first bout had been back down from 40 to 1, and he posed. Well, two years ago, it was Caroline Beasley who made the headline. She became the first girl ever to ride a winner at the Cheltenham Festival. And today, she was back again on that same horse, Elia Gatti, in the Christie's Fox Hunters Chase. She was made 5 to 2 joint favourite to repeat the success. The other joint favourite was Further Thought, who came to grief early in the race. In the end, it was one for the bookmakers. Racing down now towards the next, the third last, and it's Elm Boy from Borderberg, then Talon. Elm Boy, beautiful jump there from Borderberg in second, then Talon, then Cherry Chief, then Eliogati. Elm Boy and Mr. Alan Hill as they level up now for home. Just two fences left to jump in the Christie's Fox Hunters Challenge Cup, and Elm Boy is clear of Borderberg and Talon. Penultimate fence this, Borderberg. Elm Boy jumps it well clear of Borderberg second. Talon third, coming to the final fence now. Elm Boy, a long way clear of Borderberg. It looks as though he's only got to jump it. Ears pricked, Elm Boy. Oh, he doesn't jump it brilliantly, but gets away with it. Borderberg jumps it second. Coming to jump it third is Talon. And as they race into the closing stages, Elm Boy and Alan Hill stride away to win this from Borderberg and Peter Greenall with... Rob Munro Wilson third on Talon. And happily, further thoughts jockey Tim Thompson Jones was relatively unscathed after his third fall at the meeting. Well, by the time the fourth race came along, the punters were right up against the ropes. And indeed, they latched upon Monica Dickinson's runner, by the way, as one of the gambles of the meeting. He was back from three to one down to seven to four. Three to one taken anti post this morning. But it was a race that the high rollers would want to forget. Running down towards the third last, Akarine has regained the advantage now from another Duke in second. Then comes Run and Skip. Behind Run and Skip is, by the way, still making progress. Pince Rowan trying to get back into the picture. Akarine is clear, though. And it's Akarine, a bad mistake there by Gallagher. And uh, Mari Venture is a faller, and Akarine still being pressed by another Duke. Then comes Run and Skip, then, by the way, the favourite, then West Tip, behind West Tip is Scott Lane, and then comes Prince Rowan, racing towards the second last now in the Ritz Club National Hunt charity chase and on the near side it's another duke who's taken a fractional advantage now from Akarine on the far side run and skip his third another duke and Akarine they land together from in third place 
Run and skip, then comes West Tip and then Scott Lane. This is the final fence now. Akarine on the far side, on the near side, another Duke. Then comes West Tip and Run and Skip. Akarine and another Duke and West Tip producing a run between the two and beginning to get up. It's West Tip now in the centre who's taken the initiative of Akarine. They're racing into the closing stages and West Tip is going to win the Ritz Club National Hunt Handicap Chase and at the line. West Tip is the winner and Akarine is second. It's going to be close for third and it's very close with a photo between Run and Skip and another Duke for third place. And Run and Skip was third, with the poor old punters tailed off. But Floyd did come to the rescue in the fifth race. Here are the full afternoon's results. The 2.15 in Cheltenham, first number 11, first bout 5 to 1. Second number 1 against the grain, 40 to 1. And third number 25, no harm done, 12 to 1. The 2.50, first number 7, Elm Boy, 10 to 1. Second number 1, Borderberg, 16 to 1. And third number 15, Talon, 66 to 1. The Cheltenham Gold Cup, the 3.30, first number 12, Forgive and Forget, 7 to 1. Second number 17, Right Hand Man, 15 to 2. And third number 9, Earls Brig, 13 to 2. The 4.5, first number 9, West Tip, 6 to 1. Second number 4, Akarin, 25 to 1. Third number 14, Run and Skip, 16 to 1. And fourth number 8, another Duke, 50 to 1. The 440, first number 16, Floyd, 5 to 2 favourite. Second number 21, Comedy Fair, 11 to 2. Third number 8, Herbert United, 8 to 1. And fourth number 2, Prido Boy, 9 to 1. And the last race, 515, first number 5, Straight Accord, 15 to 2. Second number 9, Connaught River, 50 to 1. And third number 1, Classified, 11 to 8 favourite. And the outcome of today's programme ensured that Steve Smith Eccles won the Ritz Club Charity Trophy as top jockey over the three days of the meeting. A trophy presented by Captain Mark Phillips. And so the curtain comes down on another hugely successful National Hunt Festival. A festival with records galore. See you then beating the time record for the champion hurdle on the first day. Badsworth Boy becoming the first horse ever to win three successive Queen Mother champion chases. And today, finally, forgive and forget, winning an unforgettable race for the Gold Cup. What a week. Good night. And see you. Badsworth Boy comes to the last, ears pricked, being chased forlornly by Farbridge. Badsworth Boy jumps it from Farbridge in second, Kyoto third, and as they race up towards the line, Badsworth Boy strides away in a win it in tremendous style. Dadsworth Boy makes turf history. It's first bout from No Harm Done as they race into the closing stages. First bout and Steve Smith Eccles as they race towards the line from No Harm Done, John Joe and Neil. And also against the grain and at the line. First bout has won it from against the grain. It's West Tip now in the centre who's taken the initiative of Akarine. They're racing into the closing stages and West Tip is going to win the Ritz Club National Hunt Handicap Chase and at the line. West Tip is the winner and Akarine is second. It's going to be close for third. He's calling him in to line up. And John Franklin has positioned himself about 12 from the inside. And that's it. They're under orders and they're away. And Imperial Black is one of the first to show from Roman Bistro. Then on the outside is Musso. Just in behind Musso is Grease Paint. Imperial Black. And as they race down towards Beaches, Rupert Tiet. Rupertino joins Imperial Black on the outside Roman Bistro, then comes Musso, then Grease Paint, and as they run down across the Melling Road towards John Hanmer's sector, it's Rupertino, Imperial Black, and Musso on the outside. Over to you, John. Hey, one of the leaders, too, and so is Musso. And a bad mistake there by Never Tamper and by Judy. And the faller of the first, Talon, bashful lad, Sully Hull Sport. And as they jump the second, the Hello Dandy has gone. And as they go to the third, it's Duty on the outside from Glen Fox, Musso, then Classified, then Roman Bistro, West Tip. And a faller there was Crozer, and Northern Bay has fallen, and Shady Deal has fallen. And as they jump the fourth over to Julian Wilson. Dandy, in fact, unseated his rider, but Duty leads coming down towards the one before beach. As Glenn Fox there, towards the inside is Roman Bistro, towards the center is classified with grease paint in a perfect position. Musso also in a good position. All the leaders over that one. In fact, uh, practically everything seems to be over it as the leaders run down to beaches. 
Combi, in fact, the faller at the back. And the leader down to Beaches is Doody. Doody coming to Beaches and over it. Doody calls a cab. Glenn Fox over in second. Then the Roman Bistro and all the leaders are over. Art Cloud makes a bad mistake as a faller at the back. Attack Roy is down. Hill of Slain is down. But the rest of them over and over the following fence, the seventh fence, with Doody the leader from Glen Fox in second, then Roman Bistro. Behind that is Corbier in fourth, then Musso and Imperial Black and Grease Paint, then Captain Parkhurst and uh, Royal Appointment and Rupertino as they jump the canal turn. Doody over from Glen Fox and Roman Bistro, then Corbier. Musso made a mistake there. Grease Paint jumps it well on the outside of Imperial Black, just behind those. Uh, Behind the leaders is uh, Rupertino, the Musso and Royal Appointment and uh, Captain Park Hill as they jump that one. Just behind those is Last Suspect and Scott Lane. But up front, it's still Doody from Glen Fox, Corbier, Roman Bistro, Imperial Black as we rejoin John Hammer. And still the leader is Doody from Glen Fox, then Raymond Bistro, Imperial Black, Corbier going easily on the inside, then comes Rupertino, Grease Paint going smoothly, then Captain Park Hill and going to the 12th fence. It's Duty in the lead from Glen Fox, Imperial Black, then Raymond Bistro and Corbier and Rupertino. Just behind them comes Grease Paint, then Captain Park Hill, Scott Lane, who made a mistake, Masso, who made a mistake, then last suspect, West Tip. Three quarters of the way down the field, but where he wants to be by the look of it as they go across the Melling Road with Judy in the lead from Glen Fox, Imperial Black, Rupertino, Corbier, then Raymond Bistro, Grease Paint, then Scott Lane, Last Suspect, and West Tip and Musso, and Royal Appointment, and over to Peter O'Sullivan. Yes, it's Doody and Tony Mullins having his first ride in the National. Well clear at the moment as he comes down towards the next. Doody clear of Imperial back and Black and Rupertino. Then Corbier on the inside. Glenn Fox on the outer. Roman Bistro is next. And behind them come Grease Paint and then Scott Lane. And behind Scott Lane is Royal Appointment as they come to jump this one. Doody lands in the lead from Imperial Back and Rupertino and Glenn Fox. Another plain one before the chair. Doody in the lead. Rupertino, Imperial Black, Glenn Fox and Corbier. Then comes Grease Paint and just in behind them, West Tip. And now they're making towards the chair with Doody clear of Rupertino, Corbier, Imperial Black, West Tip. Behind West Tip is Glenn Fox close. Over the chair, Doody lands in the lead. And a very bad mistake there by Captain Park Hill. He's almost unseated his rider. He looks as though he's getting back, though, as Doody comes to the water in the lead by four lengths. Doody jumps it from Rupertino. West Tip jumps it third, Corbier four. Then comes Last Suspect and Imperial Black and Glen Fox, and then Grease Paint on the inside of Royal Appointment just in behind them. They come Broomy Bank, who's making ground. Behind uh, Broomy Bank is Scott Lane. They're running down now towards the Melling Road on the final circuit. Doody in the lead from Rupertino. West Tip on the outside. Corbier on the inner. Then comes Grease Paint, Imperial Black, and Lars Suspect. And with that order, over to John Hanmer. And the next is the 17th, and Doody, out in the centre of the course, is in the lead, pressed by West Tip. Lars Suspect going right up to them as well. But Doody now at the 17th. And he only just got over it. Last suspect, West Tip, Rupertino and Corbier all close up, so is Grease Paint. And behind them come Glenn Fox, who's lost ground, then Royal Appointment, Duty at the 18th. And he's having another long look at it, but he's just over it. But he's losing the lead to West Tip, Corbier and Rupertino. Then comes Last Suspect, and this is the 19th, the open ditch. Corbier on the inside with West Tip, and West Tip jumped it much the better. Raymond Bistro has refused duty, the leaders down, and as they go to the 20th, it's West Tip, Rupertino, Corbier, last suspect, and Grease Paint, and Musso's pulled up, Glenn Fox has pulled up, and come by, and over to Julian Wilson. And a mistake there by Grease Paint, but up front, it's Rupertino, West Tip on the inside, Corbier going really well towards the outside, last suspect, Mr. Snuckfitch getting closer now, as they come to the one before Beaches, Rupertino over, from in the in, on the inside, Corbier towards the outside is West Tip, then Grease Paint, Grease Paint's rider looks over his shoulder to see last suspect behind him, Royal Appointment fell
well at that one as they come down to Beaches for the second time. And the field led by West Tip on the outside of Rupertino and Corbier. Corbier and West Tip together, and West Tip makes a mistake and is down. West Tip is down. That leads Corbier in front. Drum Logan's been pulled up at the back, but Corbier leads now from Rupertino. Last suspect in third. Grease Paint is fourth. As they jump the 23rd, immigrates a faller at Beaches. And over the 23rd is Rupertino from Corbier. Last suspect in third. Then Grease Paint fourth. Scott Lane's fifth. Behind that is Mr. Snugfit. Behind Mr. Snugfit is classified and Glenn Fox as they jump the canal turn. And over it, Rupertino, Corbier, last suspect. Grease Paint. Behind Grease Paint is Scott Lane and Mr. S Mr. Snugfit. Behind that is Classified. Behind Classified is Glenn Fox and Imperial Black. And then a long gap back to Captain Parkhill and Fettered Friend. But up front, Tavatelli has refused to at the back. Forloon is a faller at the back, but up front it's Corbier now from last suspect, Rupertino. Grease Paint as we rejoin John Hammer. And Corbier in the lead from Rupertino, last suspect, Grease Paint, Mr. Snugfit, Scott Lane. And then comes Classified, and this is the last ditch, four from home. And Corbier over in the lead, a mistake by Rupertino, but last suspect's in second place. Then Rupertino being passed by Grease Paint, then comes Mr. Snugfit, Classified, and then comes Scott Lane, this is the third third last and Corbier over in the lead from last suspect who made a mistake then Grease Paint and then comes Mr. Stagford improving then Rupertino and Classified and Scott Lane and Glenn Fox and a long way back is Imperial Black and then Captain Parkhill but going across the Melling Road with two to jump it's Corbier from Grease Paint then Mr. Stagford last suspect Rupertino Classified and Scott Lane and over to Peter O'Sullivan. And just two fences left to jump in the 85 National, and it's Corbier, who's clear at the moment of Grease Paint. Then comes Mr. Snugfit, then Rupertino, and then Classified, who's trying to close on this quartet as they race down towards the last, the second last fence now. Peter Scudamore on Corbier, being pressed by Mr. Snugfit. Under pressure is Grease Paint, then comes last suspect, and then Classified still making progress. At the second last fence now, Corbier with his white face challenged by Mr. Snugfit, who takes it up. And it's Mr. Snugfit and Phil Tuck who've taken it up now from Corbier. Grease Paint is next, followed by last suspect, and then comes Classified. At the last fence in the National, Mr. Snugfit for the North. Johnson in the lead from Corbier, jumps in second, Grease Paint third. Last suspect for classified five, racing towards the elbow. And Mr. Snugfit is clear of Corbier, grease paint, last suspect and classified. Inside the final one furlong and 50 yards now as they reach the elbow. Mr. Snugfit being challenged again by Corbier. It's Mr. Snugfit from Corbier and last suspect putting in a tremendous run towards the stand side. It's Mr. Snugfit from last suspect, last suspect. It's beginning to get up on the near side, and last suspect has won it. Last suspect's the winner. Mr. Snugfit, second, Corbier, third, fourth was Reese Bates, and fifth was classified. Behind them came Imperial Black and Rupertino. And so the result of the 1985 Seagram Grand National. First, number 11, last suspect. Owned by Anne Duchess of Westminster, trained by Captain Tim Forster and written by Hugh Davis. Second was number 36, Mr. Snugfit, owned by Mr. A. Greenwood, trained by Mickey's to be and written by Phil Tuck. And third was number one, Corbier, owned by Mr. B. R. H. Burra, trained by Mrs. Jenny Pittman and written by Peter Scudamore. And the gallant Grease Paint, fourth. So another triumph in the national for Tim Forster who won it with well to do first with his own horse and then with Ben Nevis and for Hugh Davis a first triumph at what is his fourth attempt And the result of the 1985 Grand National, first, last suspect, 50 to 1. Second, Mr. Snugfit, 12 to 1. Third, Corbier, 9 to 1. And fourth, Grease Paint, 13 to 2, joint favourite. Fifth was Classified. Sixth, Imperial Black. Seventh, Rupertino. Scott Lane was eighth. Ninth, Glenn Fox. Tenth, Blackrath Prince. And eleventh, Captain Parkhill.
And casualties at fence number one, Bashful Lad and Talon and Solihull Sport all fell. Fence number two, Hello Dandy fell. Fence number three, Crozer, Northern Bay, Shady Deal and Knockerwad fell. At fence number five, Cumbie fell. And at Beecher's first time, Tackroy and Hill of Slain fell. At fence number 10, uh, Lucky Vane pulled up and Leany Jewel fell. At fence 15, Musso pulled up. At fence 17, Never Tamper and Greenhill Hall both pulled up. Fence number 19, Judy fell. On a promise pulled up and so did Roman Bistro and Our Cloud refused. At fence 21, Drum Lagen pulled up and Royal Appointment fell. At fence 22, Immigrate and West Tip fell and Clonturton pulled up. At 23, Broomy Bank unseated his rider, and fence 24, Falloon fell, and Tomatelli pulled up, and at fence 27, Fethard Friend pulled up.